very good morning and welcome to the Modus Super Series here on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. It's Friday morning, which means the conclusion of Group C, where we're going to find out two more names that are going to join Leonard Gates in the finals night field here in Week 2 of Series 3. Well, last night, we got Group B underway here under the roof of the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And what a night we saw, as described now by Chris Murphy. It was B for bounce back ability as Prakash Jiwa recovered from an opening match horror show in which he missed 15 darts at double by defeating Colin Osborne without missing once. It was B for bizarre as everybody kept beating everybody else. Osborne wanted three players to win two and lose two. It was B for battles. Adam Hunt winning this one against Rob Collins, the pair of them finishing on four points. It was B for Brilliant, a high standard, with a group average of almost 90 for the night and some fine finishes like this one from the Man of Steel. Ultimately, it was B for Bates, Owen Bates, proving the pace setter with three wins from four. Places up for finals night for grabs today. The question is, who will it be? So then that is what we saw in Group B. As you can see, as ever, Scott Mitchell is with me up here on the balcony. He'll be looking ahead to Group C a little bit later on. But before we do, let's just have a quick check then of the table in Group B because overnight, Owen Bates is the man that leads the way. He struck a real charge in the second half of that session, picking up six points to his name. At the halfway stage of the night, every single player was on two. You then got Will Collins and Adam Hunt as well as Colin Osborne, all on four points, but it's going to be work to do for Prakash Jiwa going into the final session this evening. Let's have a look then at day two by the numbers, or group B by the numbers now, and see how the session stacked up in group B, because we saw 58 legs played between our players, a checkout ratio of one in three, and an 89.3 to average, the highest of which coming from Colin Osborne, a 98 0.76. It was a fantastic standard last night. A really, really good group. Thoroughly enjoyable darts, that is for sure. But we'll park that. We'll focus on that at 10 o'clock this evening here on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel because Scott Mitchell is with me to talk all about Group C, which yesterday was all about the man they call JB. JB, indeed. He was superb yesterday. He did all the hard work. He did the donkey work yesterday to put him in the position today. Really, a couple of wins, and he should be home and dry. It feels like today is going to be about the race for second place. It is, and uh, where that's going to come from, it could come from one of three. We really don't know how the guys are going to fare this morning. It's early. It's an early start. We're not used to playing at this time. I think it's who gets out of the traps this morning is going to really clamp their authority on that position. Let's have a look then at the table, then at the halfway point of the group, because John Brown leads the way. He won all five of his matches yesterday, so that puts him on to 10 points. But the two just in behind, Conan White and Callum Francis, they actually face off in our first match of the morning. Well, they were our last game yesterday, and that was a 4-3 nail-biter. So how important were those points last night in the last game? Now the two play each other first game. One of those is going to stretch clear after this match into second place. Are we looking at just them two for second spot, or could the likes of Butler and Hayes with a good day today possibly put themselves in the conversation well i think a lot of it's going to depend on who john brown beats if he beats them all again today then leonard will be in uh, larry sorry will be wrong american he's definitely larry, part yeah, of that absolutely way. yeah larry larry will, will have more of a chance if john's wiping the field again so it will close things up i think this is a big game to whether this first game to whether larry will manage to catch them or not and his first two games are massive in this group to see whether he's going to be in position to be able to catch them as for luke getty we saw signs at the end of yesterday something was there obviously he'll be hoping for an incline today yeah we saw him swap darts a shorter point a longer point we, we saw all sorts yesterday he just didn't quite have his confidence until that last game you know all he, he, he lost the four before all the airs and graces had gone he just went up there and threw darts which is what you've got to do when a dart player starts thinking he's in massive trouble I suppose we're starting off with, well, they call it a six-pointer in football. We haven't got three points in baseball, so I suppose we'll have to call this a four-pointer. You can call it what you like, H. You usually do. I usually do. He'll be calling it how he likes as well in the commentary box. He's going to be joining Chris Murphy for all of the action and all the drama there is to come here in 
Group C. But before we do that, we're just going to have a quick check on the betting here in Group C because this is how the bookmakers prize these apart. Perhaps not a surprise to see John Brown installed as a wonderful favourite to win the group. No, absolutely not. You know, he's like I say, we're, he's nearly home and dusted, isn't he? He's, he's just got to keep his head right, win a couple of games, and, and there's no way that he can drop them below. So that's not a difficult one. Conan five to one. Yeah, he came in probably that game, that last game win last night has brought those odds in on him. And Callum Francis right there at eleven to one. He could be the good money on this one. It'll be interesting to see. Scott Mitchell is going to join Chris Murphy in commentary for all fifteen games that we've got for you here in Group C this morning. It is going to be another dramatic day of Super Series action. So do stay tuned to us throughout the course of the day. But for now, Scott's going to make the run down to join Chris to watch Callum Francis against Conan Whitehead. Yes, the final day, Friday of the weekly Arrows action means five places up for grabs at finals night. Leonard Gates already there, of course. John Brown as good as there, as just explained by Henry and Scott. Callum Francis and Conan Whitehead were a big match to kick off the action here because whoever wins it will put themselves in pole position to take that second place. It would take an ultimate capitulation from John Brown not to make it, but hardly any margin for error. For this pair, you could think they can afford to lose maybe one First match today, no to more than that. Game on. And then we come back at 10 p.m. with that thrilling climax to that bonkers, balmy, brilliant Group B. 43. As Scotty said, big match at the end of yesterday, and it's a big match. At the start of today, Callum Francis 94. could have been almost home and dry himself. But he put an even bigger gap between himself and uh, Conan 100. Whitehead. But as it is, Whitehead got the job done in a last leg decider. And he has the opportunity now to put two 100. points between him and his opponent. Absolutely. I mean, Callum Francis at 11 to 1 is, is good money for me because uh, if Conan has that slow start, 58. which he's been notorious for um, in Group A, and if he has that again today, he could find himself wanting with only two going through from the group. Yeah, big 57. two games for him, isn't it? The first two matches against Francis and Butler. Yeah, massive because obviously they're the threats to that position of second place. Well, they're all threats to each 60. other is the uh, the joyous thing about it. And will we see any tight arms? Will we see any emotion? You need to stay with us. We will bring you all the action here on Modus Super Series. Yeah, 25 games of darts to come across two sessions. The final five at finals night will be confirmed. Who will join 60. Leonard Gates? It should be a thrilling finale come Saturday. Remember, an earlier start time now, 7.30 p.m. UK time for the final night action. And if you are in and around the Portsmouth area, why not get yourself down here? It, tickets absolutely free. All you've got to do is secure them by the website dartshop.tv. 58, Conan Yukon, 90. I thought Conan would have gone the 20s here and gone 2020 ball, but 50. Obviously, Callum your car Callum 122. Isn't going to get the 122. Almost a power play from Conan White, isn't it? First thing in the morning, first leg of the morning to say to Callum Francis on a shot like that. Conan I don't fancy 40. you, pal. I think Callum's feeling the importance of this game already. That was two slack darts there after game the first. The first leg. Conan's Conan obviously White done then. the right thing, takes the leg. So Conan White had all about trying to sneak through. He's a man who knows what it's like to win on finals night. Of course, he did it twice in Super Series like 1. Conan to throw first. Game on. Including the grand final when he pocketed £20,000 for his trouble. 
94. And he's a player that's not bothered in which position he gets through to the final. He knows it's like a restart. Those those uh, players have. And 100. He, he's quite happy. He just wants to be in the mix. He needs to get to that night. And he doesn't worry whether he goes through first, second, third, sixth. It doesn't matter. He, as long as he's in that room 98. on that night, he believes he can always win it and take the money. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't matter really, does it? As long as you're there, you've got to be in it to win it. 83. Ninety-six. He's uh, just making his presence felt at the moment 85. in this match. Fifty-nine. One hundred and forty, Conor Carr, one hundred and fifty-four. I think many would agree that Callum Francis probably got away with it a little bit yesterday 16. anyway to win three Callum matches, Milcar, all of them for three. But once that he has, I mean, overnight he'll be thinking he has a great chance to get out of this group. Well, exactly. If you haven't played near your best and you're still in that 53. position. Fifty-three. You can Calling just up it a bit 94. the next day. You've got every chance. Yeah, absolutely. 94 for Conan. Didn't go the ball route. He's gone double 18 for double top. 54. Come on, your car, 40. Almost pulled it off as well, but it's Francis who wants tops now to level up the match and cancel out that immediate break of throw. Oh, that's a, a dodgy one. A bit closer with that one. 30. Come on, your car, 40. I think the distance he was away with the first one really put him off on those next two. Made him believe that he couldn't hit it. Conan now got double 10 coming Game in. Game shot on the second leg. Conan Whitehead. And once again, a last dart finish there from Conan. Stab to the heart of Callum Francis. Yeah, win for Whitehead would see him pull two points clear of Do Callum Francis. On eight and Game two on. points behind John Brown. On ten, we were talking about who's going to go through with John Brown, but there is still sixty. The the possibility that it's not Brown that finishes in first position if Conan White beats Francis here, and if he beats John Brown when they play later, you'll 60. have every chance of of taking top spot from this group. Yeah, indeed. But John Brown looks nice and calm in the back room this morning, having having a throw up. He seems calm and collected. Enjoying the company of the other guys. He, you know, he looks confident. But then I suppose you would after winning. Going clean, straight, sweep yesterday, really. 140. Yeah, great first game for John Brown as well. Just to settle any potential nerves of doing what Scott Walters once did here, which was winning all five on Thursday and losing all five on Friday and not qualifying. He's playing Luke Getty, bottom of the group without a win. Priced at 200 to one to win the group, Luke Getty today. For those who... If you don't understand gambling, that means if you put 100. a pound on Luke Getty, you will lose a pound. Ah, I get it now. 60. I've never really understood betting. Thanks for that, mate. It would, of course, be mathematically impossible if Brown does win that match. He'd be 12 points ahead of Luke. Who did, however, 34. produce some good Colin stuff Carl in his last game, being the best leg of the day, the 11 data. Yeah, we spoke about that up on the balcony, that, you know, it was a case of the real Luke Getty, please stand up, and he actually did. 81. Well, it's Carl still the slow start from Conan White that we've come to expect in these morning sessions. However, it's a slow start that has still allowed him to lead this match 2-0. Callum, Callum Francis, 60. 60 can be awkward, can't it? Well, he almost got it in one dart. 50. He's thrown two darts Connor at top, so they've been shockers in this match. Yeah, they won't be, he won't be pleased with that. Conan's gone across to his 
favour 32. Game show Once again, he hits it last dart. It really is a last dart dagger to the heart for Callum Francis. Sa semblance of a smile on the face of Conan Whitehead there. He's enjoying his morning. Ball play Conan to throw first. Game on. Three leg lead. Why wouldn't he be? Any any convincing win in this group is going to be a boost as well because there's not much between the leg difference of those in the chasing pack. One hundred. Francis from visibly quicker there with that visit and the better result. So not been the score, and he's been there twice already before Conan. That's a finish. And hasn't finished it off. Said a couple of days ago, as a dart player, I always find it easier to hit a double after somebody's missed. It's just risking letting them have that go. Fifty-six. Come and closing in. Hasn't by any means been a an all-conquering. Domineering display from Conan White, as Scott's just mentioned. He has hit basically after Francis has missed the most legs. 94. Six day. Conan Car 134. Just for the match. Could go tops, tops. That was the intention. Uh, quite a safe dart, 94. knowing that Come Francis will have won four nine. Can't be done now. Sixty. Conan will car forty. A great deal of pressure on this for Conan. He's been hitting with his last dart. On each visit, with three darts in his Same hand, and he's done it again. So Conan Whitehead opens his account this morning, puts his stamp on Group C, going on to eight points and second place clear. Not the greatest start, greatest averages, but four from 12, 33% on the finishing is enough for a 4-0 win. Join us on Modus Super Series after the break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where Conan Whitehead, our former champion, has got the better Callum Francis by four legs to nil in the first game of the day. It wasn't a classic in terms of averages, but it is a huge win for Conan Whitehead in terms of the league table. It moves him on to eight points. It keeps Francis on six. Whitehead doing the double in that particular series of games now means he is the player in second place in the table. Next up for us is the man that led the way overnight. That's John Brown, who won all five of his matches on Thursday. He takes on Luke Getty, who is going to get some wins on the board on Friday here at the Super Series. And watching this one for us in the commentary box is Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Thank you, Henry. Yes, Conan Whitehead kick-starting his campaign, his charge to finals night. The final chance to get there. John Brown, well, all he needs to do is tread water, really, on Friday, having won all of his matches yesterday. He takes on a man who lost all of his matches in Thursday's play, although he did put up a bit more of a fight in his final match. The only player to get more than one leg against Brown, Luke Getty. So Brown will be fully aware that this match is not a foregone conclusion. And in a way... The fact that Getty did perform against him First yesterday John might just do first. John Brown a, a bit of good and sharpen the mind Game somewhat. On. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. Uh, 60. The one thing we didn't realise about the last match, that 4-0 win for Conan sent his legs 30. difference ratio to stratospheric against Callum Francis. Callum's now minus five and Conan's on plus six. So he's done himself the world of good what there as well in that situation. Yeah, when you're playing your rivals in, in the final day, as Brown weighs in with the maximum here, the first of the morning. Yeah, it's not just 57. A, didn't end up just being a, effectively a four-pointer that match, but also an eight-legger, didn't it? Because he added four legs to his own column, but took four off 55. Francis's. Yeah. He definitely, uh, definitely did himself 44. some big favours with the 4-0 win there. What would you like to see from Luke Getty today? Because one of the things we discussed yesterday was that he spent a lot of time beating himself up. 100. I just want to see him play with the freedom that he did to hit that 11 dart leg in the last game. And it looks like we're starting to see a little bit of it. 121. John Rukar, 106. And for John, for all his brilliance yesterday, he did only hit two 180s all, all group yesterday. But he was doing enough that he didn't need to. 74. He's already gone some way to putting that right with one in this leg. And he's almost won the leg. One hundred and a John Brown John in this form means that Luke's just got to get his head down and take no notice of what's going on around him and and do his own thing. Bit of a blocker there for John. Sixteen. Look at your car. One hundred and forty-nine. I said he's almost won the leg, John Brown, but almost 57. doesn't get you anything. John you have to hit the 16. double in the end. And this was the top bit of his game yesterday. His finishing was first sublime John yesterday. Brown. He mustn't let himself get annoyed with that, John Brown. JB's just got a second leg. Say, look, I won the leg. Game on. It's in the bag. On to the next. Forget it. Eighty-one. And he wins this. He's then four points clear of second place. Conan Whitehead again, but more notably, more importantly, 55. six points clear of third. And that leg difference he got is like an extra win anyway. So you'd have to say that that would 100. be him through, really. Well, barring his arm falling off between the hockey and <laughs> the players' room, basically. 43. Mathematically likely to need at least one more win, but you know, Scott says 50. it would probably be 
the most incredible turn of events if he wasn't to make it. 51. We have seen players, as I said, not make it after winning the first five matches. I don't think we've ever seen anybody not make it after winning the first six. 60. One hundred and forty. Again, like you said yesterday, Luke, having a little bit of a better leg has done John a favour here and 96. kept him honest a little bit. One hundred and eighty. Well, that Look, match of the tally from yesterday. Two one eighties in this match. John Brown. Yeah, two one eighties in the whole group for him yesterday, 58. and now he's hit two. John Lucar, thirty two in his first match, and it leaves him thirty two. Got a bit of a demon to him. Last leg. Similar darts as well in similar no positions. Luke Lucar, fifty six. So can Luke get off the mark? Sixteen for top. And Getty, Getty. Game shot on the second leg. Get in. Luke Getty. There's Luke Getty as he levels this match at one apiece, but all about John Brown's dodgy doubling in that southwest area of the board. The leg John to third first. Game on. He's had nine darts of double, all of them. 100. In those 16s and 8 segments, and has only managed to strike once. Ninety six. One hundred. Virtually no body movement there, all just arm from that side shot with John Brown. One hundred and twenty five. Ninety-six. The type of throw you want to have. It has no problems. Eighty-two. And just what's between the ears with any throw is your biggest problem. Not necessarily what your arm is doing. Is this Luke Getty starting to give John 85. Brown a few problems here? Eighty-five from Brown leaves a, a finish. That only requires one treble, but get his right on his shoulder here, and he's going to pass him. 100. John Lucar, 120. 100. Opportunity 100. not for the Luke rank Lucar outsider. 98. The man at the bottom of this group without a win to his name. That's two darts at double 19 to break Brown's throw. Game and for the, the second leg. day in Luke a row... Getty. Luke Getty takes two legs off John Brown. That is twice as many as anybody else in this group. Both like Luke Getty first. Game that off. was a break of throw also. Confidence starting to come through with Luke Getty. 134. As we said earlier, he really isn't playing for a lot, only a bit of pride. Sometimes that can be enough to just light the blue touch paper. 134. And if he does win, it just keeps the question mark hanging over John Brown, doesn't it? 134. Keeps Callum Francis four points behind. It gives Gary Hayes and Larry Butler the chance to get to the same 100. amount. And they play each other next, so one of them will. Luke's attitude here is he doesn't want to finish the group on no points, and he wants points. He doesn't want to have that bagel on the group score sheet. Just looking at the way the fixtures have fallen as well, John Brown doesn't play until the last match of the next round of fixtures. 140. So if he gets a better Robin, there is a possibility. It could only be two points clear of third place. 
93. And you're forgetting you'll have a lot of time to think in that space of time, too, because that's probably the longest break he could possibly have between matches. 89. Well, Luke Getty might 40. give him something more to think about here. Double top, the 3 1. That's a good guide as well. Couldn't use it. Double 10. Game shot on the fourth way. It's 3 Luke 1. Getty. And bottom leads top. This leg John to third first. Game on. Yeah, are you considering 43. or reconsidering about where to put your pound here, Murph? No. Yeah, th that price was to top the group, by the 58. way, not to win this match before all the Luke Getty fans start getting at me. Meant in good spirit, but yeah, still, even if he wins this match, 100. he wins it 3 1. There'll be 23 legs and eight points from the top of the group. Seven. I think actually 200 to 1 was a stingy price. Fifty-eight. This isn't the chase, you know. <laughs> where if you take an extra step, you you know it's forty-five grand or whatever. Well, don't get me started on the game 42. shows when Glenn Durant's here. We always get reminded about his appearance on Eggheads. I've got to be honest. I'm not going to say anything, but I knew the answers to those as well. I mean, they weren't 100. difficult, were they? <laughs> if you're watching, Glenn, good morning. We're all proud of you, pal. 140. A brown down, but not out yet of this match. And that's one number three. Eight. More in one match today than he hit in all of his matches yesterday. And bizarre, it could be in a match that he loses. 140. John Yukar, 20. He wins the leg. Game shot on the fifth leg. John Brown. And he asks the question of Luke Getty. He has the chance to serve it out for a first win of the week. Six leg loop to third first. Hold a Game throw on. there for JB. 16 darts. Showing signs that he's waking up. 135. His opponent. Already woken up this morning. Yeah, quick out of the blocks in this decider. 45. Finishing really has been the difference in the game. 39. Getty. It's, the, it's the story of the match, isn't it, really? The finishing. Yeah, Getty basically more than twice as good as Brown in that department. 58. Big role reversal of the stats from yesterday for sure. Class at any level, 43% for Luke Getty in this game. He's going to get his opportunity. Nothing John Brown can do 40. to stop him now. One hundred. My advice to John would be not get frustrated here. He needs to be that cool, calm, and collected guy that he was yesterday. One hundred. Look at your car. One hundred and twenty-seven. Well, this is one hundred and twenty-seven for the game. Bullseye if he fancies it. Ninety-five. He was never going to go for it. If you know darts, I mean, you know darts, you'd have known that there was no need for him to go for that. Double 16. 16. Backing himself with three 32. to finish the job for Luke. 
to get his first win. Game shot on the match. And that's exactly it. what he's done. He blasts Brown, who remains on 10 points. He's defeated for the first time. Getty wins for the first time. A remarkable start to the day's action. As John Brown, well, he was looking like he had more than a foot in finals night. But he will have to now wait and watch as his rivals start to close the gap over the next three matches before he plays again. The first of them features the ADC qualifier Gary Hayes and the legendary American Eagle Larry Butler. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have seen some seismic results early on in the action. And may have we seen one in our second match. Luke Getty, who hadn't won a game yesterday, has kicked off today in perfect style, getting the better of John Brown by four legs to two. Brown, who was previously undefeated in this group, both players' records have now subsequently gone for completely different reasons. That was after Conan Whitehead claim victory against Callum Francis in our first game of the session. Now, we're just about to end the first round of fixtures. Let's have a quick check on how the land lies in terms of the league table. As you can see, John Brown is still in front. Still a healthy legs difference, but now things may just feel a little bit more uncomfortable for him. Conan Whitehead just two points behind on eight. And if Callum Francis wins his next game, then it could be very, very interesting indeed. John Brown is not through yet. And so you'll be hoping to get those wins required to get him into tomorrow night's final. And if you do want to be of us for tomorrow night's final, of course you can do. And you can join us every single Saturday night here at the Modus Super Series. Tickets are complimentary. They're free and you can get them from dartshop.tv. And they're available for every single Saturday night up until Champions Week, which is on Saturday, May the 6th. So get that date in the diary. And of course, we start now at the brand new start time 
of 7.30 on a Saturday night. Well, let's head into our third game of the session now. It sees Gary Hayes in action. He's our ADC qualifier this week. He's been with us since first thing on Monday morning. He is up against the American legend, that is Larry Butler. We have a legend on stage refereeing in Paul Hinks. And we've got two legends in the commentary box, Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Uh, many thanks there, H, for your summary. I think we'll call you our cosmic presenter this week up there on the balcony. Doing sterling work. So in this one, Gary Hayes. He managed to beat Larry yesterday in the corresponding fixture. Larry Butler, well, he knows what he needs to do if he wants to jump up this table and start to challenge for that second position. And you feel that only a win here can help either of these two guys, really. Yeah, it does become a must-win match. It was always going to be like the case because one first. of Callum Francis or Conan Whitehead Game would on. have moved to eight points away. The fixtures have fallen have meant that we're getting some really crucial contests early on. The only one that didn't seem like a crucial contest was Tom Brown against 45. Blue Getty. But as Henry was saying there, the tectonic tungsten plates are starting to shift about and John Brown is not yet safe. 100. The packs start to chase and he will have to wait. He doesn't play for another three matches before he meets this man, Gary Hayes. 95. Conan Whitehead and Larry Butler would have played each other and Callum Francis would have played Luke Getty. So there's a possibility that three players could be two points behind him. 85. Yeah, the big possibility. But I, th I think John's a character that I don't think he will worry too much about that. He, uh, hopefully he'll be able to just put that down to a, as a game that, that, that has just kind of passed him by a little bit. And it passed 100. him by early doors when he was missing the odd... Odd double there. Because that was the story of the game, but you can't worry about that. Chances are he'll put that right next game, and, and he has to think positively about putting it right the next game. Harry looking to join Leonard Gates, that is, to make 16. it a, a pair of American Aces at finals night on Saturday. Maybe if he gets there, we should do some kind of American-themed finals night. What do you think about that, Scott? Yeah, I think that would be good. Get the Stars and Stripes out up on the balcony. 60. Follow your car, 96. Burgers and fries all round. Sadly, won't be here. 80. Myself, Get but your I will car, be 141. watching. Listening to the ace analysis of the man alongside me. 109. Lottie O'Connor, 16. I'm going to give away too Each much, but there will be another Lottie American Butler. player in action next week. That's all I'm saying. Next week, though, the standard, the names on the list of players that Absolutely jump off the page. It's going to be a fantastic Second week Lottie for the Super Series. First. Game on. Ninety-six. One hundred. Larry Butler taking the opening leg in sixteen darts. First dart double popped in, no problem for the 65 year old. 42. 42. Been with the Barrel Company Dynasty for many years. I was having a little chat with him at the pub last night. Went next door for a diet coke. Before I got my head down, I'm just trying to do a little bit of, uh, get a little bit of info out of Larry round there. And yeah, he's been with. Dynasty, many, many years. 97. I'm assuming and hoping for Larry's sake that this was after the afternoon session and not the, the night session, Scott. 
Yeah, definitely after the uh, afternoon session, mate. The evening, the night session, I nearly had my eyes shut by the time I'd crossed the road to get to the hotel. And Larry Butler, fully prepared before anyone who backed him started panicking there. What on As you can see, eating. might be an old eagle, but he's playing like a spring chicken. Just the 180 for Harry yesterday. Well, you quite eat, you see. I have on my records, and uh, he's hit two today already in his first match. It seems to be a bit of a trait of Friday morning. Although it didn't do John Brown any good. Maybe a different outcome for Butler, who wants double seven to double his lead. 79. Gary O'Carr, 147. Thirty, lot of you require seven. Once again, Gary Hayes falling of his setup jinx that he's had most of Game the week. The second leg, Larry Butler. No such mistake from Larry Butler. You give him a chance. So they got it to throw first. Game on. And our spring chicken will take it. It went the distance this fixture yesterday, and it was actually Hayes who came out on top, 4-3. With a bit of a scrappy high 70s affair, if I remember rightly, in the averages. 100. Very nip and tuck. And they both seem to have lifted it a little today. Three 180s in the match. 100 and it's high 80s. Butler, though, the man who's looking to make the move at the moment, though Hayes could half the deficit if he can take out 161 in six. 125. Gary O'Carr, 161. 55. Harry's 180 in this match. Ironically, took him to six 180s and the four. most in the group, according Gary to my record. In. Which does show it's scoring for show. 18s will be the target now. Hayes certainly a man who has 98. represented the ADC well this week. It's going to be a big ask to make it to finals night, certainly if he loses this match, but I think he can go back with his head held high. He's been in with a lot of Gary more experienced eight. campaigners this week, hasn't he? But I know talking to him this morning, he said he's learnt a lot. Game and he shot sneaks that one leg. in the corner to deny Butler the opportunity to snatch that leg. Still advantage to the American, but Hayes back in the match. Fourth leg, Laddie, to throw first. Game on. Yeah, Hayes keeping Butler honest. He came off it a little bit with his scoring in that leg, Larry. And 60. Hayes definitely kept him on it. Uh, Hayes would be thinking, I need to jump on this 60 if I can. 100. Fifty-eight. Some players mentally do break the leg down into two halves. We see those first nine stats uh, in most of the averages around the world now, and stats 42. have become massive within darts. And you know, you talk to some players, and they do try to break the game down and go just score hell for leather with the first three throws. 
and then deal with where they Chicken are after that. And it is a way, you know, people do say you can take it leg by leg, but you can break it down even shorter than that if that's your mentality as a player. 134. A very different standard, but I used to get massively frustrated. I used to play against my stepdad, and he was like that. He just threw a treble 20 for the entire leg, even when he was on a finish where he should switch. He'd just keep throwing for the treble 20, and he'd beat me most legs as well. It'd be so frustrating. But I think it's one of the things, isn't it? It can be annoying for opponents when you're looking at their darts, thinking what they should do. They don't do it, but they still actually manage to hit and get away with it. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, I'm around the county scene a little bit, and I keep trying to explain to the to, to the ladies that if you go 20, 20, 20 all the way down and get your double for it's a, it's a 20 average. It's a 21 average. 57. Without even hitting Gary the treble. 135. It's one of the reasons why a lot of players don't watch their opponent's darts at all. They don't want to get involved in their game. Forty-three. Not a great leave from Gary Hayes. Was on one three five. Went for the, the firework finish rather than just playing it safe. One hundred and thirty-six. Gary O'Connor ninety-two. Twenty-three. Lot of your car seventy two. Two poor visits from Hayes has given Butler the chance to punish Game him again. The fourth leg. Lot of duly, duly does from a commanding position there. Gary Hayes, six poor darts, and he knows it. You can see the look on his face. He knows like Gary to throw first. Game on. That was his mistake. There was a break of throw there for him. Uh, and 100. We have seen a few of those reactions from Gary Hayes, but he, as you say, he's a man who's still learning. Maybe a mistake there in the approach play. Went for that firework finish, a 135. Could have just tried his best to lay up. Ended up not getting a dart, a double in six from that position. And Larry Butler, the wily old fox, doing the biz. 135. Not everybody takes to the big stage on their first attempt. 45. You only ever notice the ones that that do and lap it up for that one that, that does it well. There's probably another 10 that don't, but we all think that everybody's lapped it up because that's the only one that you remember. You know, you, you think that everybody does brilliant every time that no, they go up there and they don't. Well, again, talking about learning and Gary Hayes there. Switching, he's trying to leave a finish. Now, in this position, 58. it doesn't really matter that much that what he leaves with Larry Butler on over 300, but you can see that he was trying to leave a finish and that he got it wrong. And we're going to see how much it's affected him on the very next throw and 58. how much he's chastised himself because you really have got to forget it as fast as it happened. 98. Got car, one Butler thinking ten. quite far out in the leg, you see. Now he knows he can walk up at a ton or a ton 40 and he's in business after scoring 98 from 338. Just shows that the difference in experience, 45. doesn't it? That level of board management. And this board management here from Gary Hay, once you go for a number, you've got to hit the big number. That's a minimum requirement. So if you go for a treble 16, you have to hit a 16. 41. And that's been Gary an unfortunate trait for him this week. I'm sure it's not usually like it. To qualify from up there, to be here as part of the ADC's qualifier. And now he's having no luck at all. Yeah, he's getting the sense that anything that can go wrong is going wrong. 61. Gary Hayes here. He wasn't let off by Larry Butler, who only scored 41 with his previous visit. So Hayes will return. 99. Got a your car four. 99. And that's made that more difficult as well. 
Double one. Two. Lot of your car, 100. Well, Gary Hayes was a good 230 points ahead in this leg. But from that point, has played like a man, has looked like a man that thinks he's going to lose the leg. And he will if Butler pins another one in there. Game Fabulous finish the from Larry, Larry Butler. Butler. Gets a clap from Gary Hayes. It's a 4 1 win for Butler, who leaps to third in the table on six points level with Callum Francis and two behind second Conan Whitehead, meaning the Eagle is still in contention to make it through to finals night. There is the tail of the tape in that one. And the big standout stats are the missed doubles for Gary Hayes and the hit doubles for Larry Butler. Always seems to be the case, doesn't it? Welcome back to the Mojo Super Series where the first round of fixtures for Group C here on Friday has been completed as Larry Butler ran out a 4-1 winner against Gary Hayes with four out of six on his finishing. Well, we kick off round two with the battle between Luke Getty and Callum Francis. Getty, who got his first win of his Group C campaign last time out against John Brown. He takes on Callum Francis, who is well in the race for that second place and a spot in tomorrow night's final. Describing this one for us is Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. So the two county players from Hampshire go head to head once again. And yesterday, Callum Francis edged it 4 3. But we've got a different Luke Getty at the board since that game. And he showed a bit of class this morning playing John Brown first game. Our second game, sorry. Brought home his first win of the group. So will Luke, as he should, having beaten top of the group, should be very confident going into this match. First leg is Luke to throw first. Callum, on, on the other hand, had a 
Early morning match with Conan Whitehead, which he'll probably feel got away from him a little bit. But he'll be looking to put that right in this one as well. 121. Yeah, I very rarely make predictions. I usually leave that to you and the other premier pundits that sit in the chair alongside me. But I'm going to stick my neck out here. And I think that Luke Getty will win this match. It's a man who lost all five of his games yesterday, but has come into Friday's action, hopefully with a different mentality, less of the beating himself up and more of beating his opponents up. Well, it's got to be the nothing to lose mentality, hasn't it? We, we mentioned that we thought that 41. John Brown had, had get through a breeze with his five wins, but when you haven't won a game, you go back home to your family 68. and friends overnight and uh, have a stern talking to yourself and come back and know that you've got nothing to lose. It's just 57. Go and show people what you got now rather than worry about what's happening around you. And every defeat is damaging for everybody else, really. I think it's safe to say that Six Gary eight. Hayes is probably now out of the running after that loss to Larry Butler. And Six defeat eight. for Callum Francis here would harm his chances massively, particularly after losing such a big margin to Conan Whitehead earlier on. 40. It was almost as giving, almost as good as giving Conan three points for that win, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was It was very tense, nervous headache, the way that he was throwing. And Will your car 135? The look on his face today, he has started this match in a similar ilk. And if Luke Getty... 95. Sense his weakness. I feel that, as you say, Murph, he will go straight for the jugular. 59. Louis O'Carr, 40. Good setup. Plenty of time on his side. Doesn't want to come inside here. It would leave it more awkward 20. than he started the visit. You feel that Will Getty needs to 20. be getting these quickly within three darts, otherwise the the nightmares of yesterday will start to return. Yeah, the the thing he can take no from it as he decides to bust Come the score. Car, I suppose is that all of the pressure is always going to be on his opponents because they're the ones that are harbouring hopes of making it through to finals night. But when 96. you're in Luke Will Getty's situation, the biggest pressure can be that that you put upon yourself. Double five again. This time it's outside, and he can try and use that. 15. Callum Scott Mitchell 40. Mitchell made a great point. Getty might have to get it straight away. He's missed eight. And now Callum yeah, Francis gets Callum one, Francis. hits one, and wins leg one. Eight missed darts at a double for Luke Getty. Second leg, Callum did through first. Game on. In that first leg. You have to say the worrying thing 85. for Callum Francis is that margin of defeat to Conan Whitehead because he was competitive, wasn't he, in most of his matches yesterday, four of them going 4-3. 85. Yeah, and in the group, of course, Larry Butler's now just gone up to six points as well. And his league 16. difference is plus three, where Callum's is minus five now from that massive defeat. A game after this as well. Big, big game. Conan Whitehead against Larry Butler. 36. If Conan can win that, then he takes himself level on points. Suddenly at the top of the table with John Brown, who would have a game in hand against Gary Hayes after it. One hundred on it! Francis fires in a maximum. But if Butler wins, then he will go level with Whitehead on eight. 50. Seventy-eight. 
and that leg really has already seemed to turn this match on its head. 60. In Come which was a leg that Luke Getty, Getty had eight darts, missed darts at a double. But it's not what he missed. It's Callum hitting and grabbing that big bit of confidence again. 66. To start winning legs again. One hundred and forty, Callum Hill Car thirty two. Double sixteen then. Game shot in the goes. second leg. Callum Francis. Well it's only taken Callum Francis three darts at double to hit two. Whereas Luke Getty missed eight in that opening leg. Third leg Luke Francis win. Game on. Would keep him firmly in the race, firmly in the picture on eight points if he does take victory here. Of course, if you're watching this back later and you rewind the tape, you will understand why Francis is 2 Look, That's because I predicted Luke Getty to win the game. I will be offering my next prediction in about three years' time. And which all our fans and your fans will eagerly await here at Moda Super Series. Fans? One out of them, Fan of that from Luke Getty. 97. 135. 93. Luke, your car, 91. Great leg of darts from Luke. As we saw in the first leg, it's going to be all about the double. Which you'll be throwing at in the next visit. 51. Tops after 12 on your own throw from Getty is not too shabby at all. 60. Look your car, 40. 20. France is going to make him rue that miss with a big score here and put him right 57. under. 57. Luke 20. He's left to finish. But still back Getty he's here on the, third leg. the 20. Getty. And Luke Getty takes his first leg of the match and a hold of throw. The average is not Both too pretty, but that can sometimes yeah. happen when you have two guys that know each other inside out. It goes one way or two things. It's either a scrappy, poor game, or it's an absolute five. stonker in the high 90s. And yeah. this one at this particular moment is choosing to be the scrappier one of the two choices. So that's the second 180 for Luke Getty. It's a third of the match, but just... Look at that from Callum Francis before it's about to change, of course. But he hadn't hit a, a 100 or a 140 until that point. Only a 180. It is really his finishing. 45. Has no doubt got him into this position, paired with the missed starts that Luke Getty had in that opening leg. 100. This was how Callum was doing it yesterday, wasn't it? At times, finding himself fortunate to win legs. Still doing some good stuff to win other legs. Let's, let's not forget that. 135. Well, look, they can miss and miss and miss and miss, but you still have to hit, don't you? You, you don't get the leg for them missing. 100. Look, your car, 141. Luke, getting better all the time in this match. Hopefully settled a little bit by finally 45. landing a double Calum after a dozen attempts. 16. Proving difficult to get past that dart. So important, that first dart. 60. 
Look at the tall lad. Callum Francis, it's important that first starts above the treble. Getty's got double 18 incoming. 60. Callum Milcar, 56. Well, can Callum remain clinical in this department? Two out of three. Ain't bad, as Meatloaf Game said. Three out of four play. is even Callum better. Chances. Fifth leg loops, you throw first. Game on. Fifty-eight. Strange old game, this one. You question where the Luke Getty is going to beat John Brown in the first one. Yeah, and you just wonder, don't you? You just really wonder how much those eight darts are doubling the first leg affected him because 56. he is a player who we have seen and we have mentioned many times just beating himself up. Even if he's not doing it externally, I wonder if internally it's the same conversations. 100. 100. Callum Francis is just going along his merry way. And if he gets an opportunity, he takes it. 44. He'll be looking at this game. He wants to carve the opportunities out for himself by scoring and getting there first seven. and not relying on missed doubles from Luke. One hundred and thirty-seven. Just has to stay straight to leave a finish. He's going to do that anyway. Now, how small a finish can he leave? One hundred and forty. Nice ninety. This game is not over yet. Fifty-seven. Luke, your car ninety. Have to be the twenties route. You would feel. Now needs to rescue it. Couldn't do it, so it's a chance for Callum 34. Francis. Callum your car, 122. 77. 108. Luke, your car, 56. Well, he hasn't missed much, but has he missed when it mattered? Double top for Luke Getty to cling on to Callum Francis. Tens, tens, Game shot on the pins it, leg. great Luke dart, Getty. dead centre, back in it. Once again, that was just Six a whole Callum throw. To first. Game on. On 40 start here from Francis. It put Getty in all sorts of mire. 57. Fifty-seven. Do get involved on social media at MSS Darts. Our handle there. You can tweet me at Chris Murphy one eighty or Scotty Dog Dart alongside me. Let us know who you think will make it through 16. to finals night from this group. I think the common wisdom is Conan Whitehead to join John Brown, but there's going to be plenty of save, perhaps from Callum Francis himself and indeed Larry Butler who faces Whitehead in the next Coming match. Coming to your car, 164. 44. His first two darts are a problem again for Francis. It's the scoreboard. It's the problem for Luke Getty. 29. Come in your car, 120. Well, this would be a stylish way to steal it. 
Again, problematic dart. Couldn't even think about two balls if Getty was on more of a finish 16. there. But again, the, the first dart is going to be a problem here, isn't it, on 60? So Getty should just be thinking, leave something. Just leave something. 140. That's something good. Coming across 60. This first dart is going to be an issue. He's actually done well to leave it to one side there. I wonder how intentional 50. that was. Move your car 115. Yeah, I know players do that. And throw to one side of the 20, but you've got to be pretty confident to do that. 44. Come on, your car 10. And also, when you go across the hockey and create an angle, there's always a chance that that can happen on a deflection with your darts. But it's France is now looking to seal the win. Six. Luke, your car 71. So more chances for Luke Getty. Double top to break to level. That's close, but 51. not close enough. Come on, your car four. You would think that Francis has to either hit or go inside here because that's a difficult dart for him to get past. Very difficult dart for him to get past. No score. Look your car 20. Game shot on the six leg. So Getty, Luke Getty nails the double and now has the throw to win the match, as predicted by a certain commentator an hour and a half ago. Seven and final leg, Luke to throw first. Game on. I should have resisted the temptation 95. to make that point because, of course, he'll lose this leg now. Ninety-six. Well, Luke Getty will probably be feeling that he should be out of sight here. Oh, check out. Eighty-one. Tell us he's had the more chances. Just hasn't converted. 100. But it has turned, hasn't it? Because he was zero out of eight when Callum Francis was three from four. So it's now been Francis's turn to miss eight darts in a row at double. And Getty has put things right in that department. Another 4-3 for Callum Francis. And you've got to hand it to Luke Getty because there was a spell there yesterday where it looked like he couldn't even hit the door coming out of the players' room to come to the hockey. And he's turned that right round. 100. Well, he's going to be under pressure. 140. Plenty of it. Needs to find a treble or two himself. Oh dear. That's 85. a massive last dart. Coming you feel. 72. Just keeps him clinging to the coattails of Callum Francis, who should get at least one dart for the match. 52. You know what? I'm amazed at the route. Your car 97. When he has a dart that causes such a problem blocking higher targets. Bizarre to, to leave something where he's going to have 60 with two darts. 90 left, not to be, so Francis will come back 15. with more. Come the on, car 20. Ten. Look your Once car again, 82. that second dart was almost too close to be a helpful. Scratching his head. Not taking his chances. But it's still a possibility. 17 would leave the bullseye. Bullseye it is. 43. Come on, would not get 10. near it. And now Francis has more opportunities. 13 darts missed by him. 16 Game missed the match. by Luke Francis. Getty. In a bit of a scrap of a showdown. But it is another 4-3 win. 
where Callum can maybe count himself lucky, but sometimes, as a great Bobby George says, it's better to be lucky than good. Maybe Callum Francis can be both between now and the end of the day. It is a fourth win for Callum Francis. All of them have been 4-3, and he is in contention to make it through in the top two for the big match coming up next in that race as Conan Whitehead meets Larry Butler. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Callum Francis has kept his chances of finals night very much alive by getting the better of Luke Getty by four legs to three in our previous match. So let's have a look and see what that does in terms of the league table. John Brown still out on top, still at the top of the table, but he's now got company alongside him, breathing down his neck. That race for second place between Conan Whitehead and Callum Francis most certainly is intensifying and it is Conan Whitehead who we are going to see in our next match he's taking on the Eagle Larry Butler and to watch this one in the commentary box here's Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy yeah we come to another pivotal pivotal game here at the Modus Super Series live on Sporty Stuff TV this one could have a big say in where the runner-up in the group goes. Harry Butler has a chance to level himself up with eight points in the group. 
with both Callum Francis and Conan Whitehead. And big enough, if he wins big here, he could, in fact, help his legs different like and take him in front of Whitehead. Game on. Stay with us for the next few minutes and all will be revealed. Yeah, similar feel to that meeting between Francis and Whitehead at the start of the day when Whitehead won 4 0 and in doing so got an eight leg swing in the battle between the pair of them. Twenty one. Butler could do the same here, as Scott just explained. And if Larry can inflict a, a defeat on Conan here. It would mean that Whitehead Francis and Butler himself would all be on eight points, just two behind John Brown, who faces no, Gary five. Hayes in the match that follows this. And the corresponding fixture yesterday, Larry Butler won this one, four, three. One out of them, four, He had the darts in the last leg. But Conan had the higher average. Conan had a 91. To Larry's 88, but those that no darts know that if you have the throw in those last legs, you can win with a lower average. You see it more often than you give credit for. Own and after 12 here. 93. Cornell Carr, 74. And 74, because obviously the fixture being reversed. Larry had the darts yesterday and conan has the throw today and he's taken advantage of it here in leg one 58 yeah strong stuff from conan white it just seems to have that knack of making it through conan for saturdays however he does it whenever he does it he seems to do it Getting shot on the first leg. Conan and it Whitehead. looks like the Barbarian might be making his move on Friday here. That's now five unanswered legs this morning for Whitehead. Second leg, Laddie to throw first. Game on. Ninety-nine. One hundred and forty. Conan did say on Monday, or was it Tuesday, that don't you worry, I'll still make Saturday. Tell everybody I'm going to make Saturday. One hundred. Big chance to do that and make an inroads and big steps to making it right here. And that kind of talk reminds me of when he did win that first 59. Champions Week here at the Live Lounge. He was very adamant that he'd be there come finals night. And that's when you'd see his best stuff. He much prefers the evening sessions. He's been honest and open about that. And it might be the only evening session he plays. Would be if he gets there. And who's to say he won't go and win it? And, he, and he's not one of 60. those players that, that just says this to, to try and upset other players. He says it because he he genuinely believes it. The minute that it comes out 89. of his mouth, he Conor believes that he will back it up. Well, there he decided not to go for the bolt, not to leave the bolt on the 1-2. One, well, we're seeing this percentage play more and more 60. with players on finishes 52. such as 160. Players declining Game that route the and second leg. Conan Whitehead. playing the percentages and it paid off for Conan Whitehead on that occasion. Always will be a divisive debate in darts, that one. There are stats and maths to back up that there is Do a kind of cut-off point first? as to where yeah. you should and shouldn't do it. But when a player's on a finish that requires two trebles and a double, more often than not, you will return. 81. There are some players like my good self that I'd much prefer a combination shot with the last dart. I don't seem to think as much as if I come seven. back. Let all the negatives get between my ears before I return to the board. 
and tell myself I've 100. got to hit this double top, and then I generally kind of miss it. Yeah, and there are there are players that will always go for the bull. They'd still go for the bull if their opponent was 60. back on 501 and they're on a finish because that's just the way they play the game. John Part, a great advocate of that. 81. Well, I was I was explaining about my friend in my lo the local league doing a nine data a few years back. And on that occasion, with he had the darts, and with his opponent having only scored 11 and 26, when he had the way, you know, he could have easily laid up or something, but the 141 was there to be had. Um, yeah. You have to go for it. 45. That's my philosophy. You have to go for it. And I think I made a mistake back at the, uh, the seniors the other week. I had 86 left, and I laid it up. And uh, I got punished for it. 47. Yeah, there is there is also the argument, isn't there, that if you do lay up, you put a little bit of pressure on yourself to come back and hit. It's only 40, beneficial 42. if you do hit. But Conan did on that occasion. And he leaves himself on a finish. One hundred and thirty eight. Conrad Carr, one hundred and fifty two. Good setup though from Larry Butler. Oh, this would really hurt. Not to be. Butler can break. 82. Larry O'Connor, 36. Game shot on the third leg. Larry Butler. So the American Eagle makes his first leg of the match. It's a break of throw. Both like Larry to throw first. Has a Game chance on. to hold his own throw. Turn the match to 2 2. 99. Could it be a best of three shootout here? For second spot. 41. Don't forget this is the first of a double session of important, decisive darting action on Friday at the Motor Super Series. Two from this group will go through to join Leonard Gates at tomorrow's finals night. And then three from the five in that Pickham group tonight. The action resuming at 10 p.m. live on Sporty 100. Stuff TV. Or viewers around the world can catch it on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button so you get a nudge 96. when the show is about to start. One hundred and eighty. Larry O'Carr, one hundred and sixty-seven. Forty-four. Did that first one eighty from Whitehead just force an error from Larry Butler there? It did seem like it, but once again, you've got to back it up in that last Larry start. Larry O'Carr, one hundred and twenty-three. He did a good pick up and find from. Conan. So 98 for 3 55. 1 and to return Conan the break. 98. 60 and double 19. 79. I am wide. Mario Car 68. And not particularly handsome from Conan Whitehead, so Butler comes back. Check in with our referee, but it was in, and it certainly is, Larry, but that one's not. <laughs> a little point of the finger from Conan behind, thinking this one is. Conan O'Connor, 19. And Conan returns. Had a chance to break straight no back. Larry O'Connor, 16. Well, that's a disaster. An absolute disaster from Conan Whitehead. Game shot on the just really leg. pulled it Larry into the 19 Butler. there. Shouldn't have been anywhere near it. But he gone the other side, of course. He'd have still been on a double, wouldn't he? 17, double one. Fifth leg, Conan to throw first. Game on. Still fuming, still shaking his head as he approaches the hockey at 2-2. Two, two. A game that he will have feel that he could have probably won by now. Yeah, 
140. He let it go, though, and forgotten it. He took his time before he came in on that. But Larry, Larry Butler has also jumped back on that. Come a long 85. way from America for this one. And he's not going to give it up without a fight. That's four of the nine. Five of the nine. 140. And that's where it stops. 100. A couple of times this week we've been on five, haven't we? Towards the nine data. Ninety-nine. Harry Butler, though, is on course to turn this tie around. And this would make things very, very interesting in this group, should he do it. It would only 100. be two well, points 82. separating the top four players, the four players that are in contention to make it through. Double top to move within one leg of 62. that prospect. Conrucar, 76. 76 for Conan Whitehead to move within one leg of stopping Larry's progress. And he gets two darts at double. But again, he 72. fails to find. Follow your car, 20. Butler hit this. Only three legs on the spin for him. A difficult one there. Ten. Corner your car, four. You expect this to go. Such an important leg in the match. Game shot on the fifth leg. Conan Whitehead. traditionally goes out third dart. And he keeps up with tradition. He doesn't care which double it is. It was double one. It puts that Six extra leg one to first. on the leg Game score on. on his side of the scoreboard, which is the all-important thing. 57. Stop the butler run of legs as well. And it could be. Just about end Butler's hopes, really. 100. If Whitehead wins here, he puts a four-point buffer between Butler and himself. Callum Francis sandwiched between the pair on eight points. Whitehead would actually be level with John Brown at the 89. top. Though Brown, after that brilliant day yesterday, still has a very healthy leg difference. And could pull further clear after the 100. next match when he takes on Gary Hayes. Fifty seven. <coughs> Sixty. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. So Whitehead first to a finish. Will Larry be able to leave himself a better one? Yeah, bullseye here. One hundred and five. Turn that corner and leave yourself a two darter. Stayed out of trouble, 10, no. Slightly blocked by the dart. What are your Second 97? dart, so. Butler, 97. Treble, 19. 78. So he can only 57. lay up. Con your car, 52. And hope to get a chance. Double 16, the choice for Conan Whitehead. 20. And Larry Butler will Larry get his chance. 40. Two darts for the match missed by the Barbarian. And Game the Eagle lands tops leg. to take Larry this Butler. match a distance. This leg is absolutely enormous in the context of this group. 
Seventh and final leg, Conan to throw first. Game on. Whitehead with the throw. Throwing to put that bridge between himself and Larry Butler. Oh, that, that could be a bridge too far. A Butler break. And the pair of them would be level on points. And what a start to the leg it is. Larry, Larry nearly fell into the action there with that last start. He was wanting it to go in. That he was 140, nearly a 45 degree angle to the floor when he released the last start. Had a brilliant 140 from Whitehead, 60 to take command of the leg. Yeah, when he gets a sniff, when he knows it's needed. Business head goes on and job done. And he is now the man who is looking like the most likely to go through alongside John Brown, who is pulled alongside on 10 points. But Brown looking to pull clear again next when he takes on Gary Hayes. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series and how key a double four could that be for Conan Whitehead in the final reckoning as he gets the better of Larry Butler in a last leg decider by four legs to three. It means he now moves on to 10 points in Group C. It is getting very, very interesting at the top end of the table. That is for sure. Well, we are going to round off our second round of fixtures for the day here in Group C with the battle between John Brown and Gary Hayes. And to watch this one with us in the commentary box, here's Chris Murphy and Scott Mitchell. Thanks, Henry. Yes, early defeat today for John Brown. His first in this group has just delayed his progress, delayed confirmation of his spot at finals night. No need to worry just yet, but if he is beaten by Hayes here, then the time to concern, to be concerned might be around the corner. He's watched as Conan Whitehead has closed the gap. A 4-0 win for Whitehead in his first match against Callum Francis. And then victory against 
Larry Butler in a last leg decider in that previous game means that Whitehead takes his tally to 10. First leg is John to throw first. Game on. As for Larry Butler, he's now on six and looking unlikely to make it through. Callum Francis, the man in between them on eight. 57. Important spell coming up. Brown having waited 60. for three matches to play again is now going to play two in the next three. And if he wins them both, then we'll wonder what we were worried about. 100. One hundred and forty. Great darts. One hundred and forty. Great response from the ton forty from his opponent there for JB. One hundred and twenty one. One hundred. Raise himself one of four. One hundred. John Yuka, one hundred and four. Still possible. Treble nineteen leaves tops. Now Hayes has an opportunity. Forty four. Well, John Brown was beaten by bottom 80. of the table in his first match. He's now playing second bottom. 25 and bull. 55. John Lucas, 60. 100. 100. Missed the chance and Brown. Shooting at tops to take the first leg. Game shot on the first leg. And it goes 1 0 to JB. Second leg, Gary to throw first. Game on. And he had that dart of the bullseye, Gary Hayes. It should have been 26. better, really, on 80. And you can see the head drop already. And like I say, until you've been in this situation, it's very difficult to know what's going through a player's 100. head when, when, when things are kind of creeping in game after game after game. Yeah, you see it from Getty and Hayes, but look, we're going to sit here and 85. say, try and take the positives, but they might retort with, well, what do you want us to do? Bottom of the table, not going through. Do you want us to be doing cartwheels on the stage? Not, they're not 80. going to, are they? They're disappointed not to be more competitive, but hopefully on reflection, they will see the positives of this week. It is, it's a seesaw effect, isn't it? I mean, if you've got so many negatives on one end of the seesaw and only a few positives on the other you tend to only see the end of the seesaw that is dragging you down, which is the negatives. Whereas if you're having more positives than negatives and the positive side of the seesaw is touching the One ground, minute. they're the ones that you see. Twenty six. And as a player, halfway down a leg, you remember those 26s. They don't go away for a week, I promise you. 91. Nice lead from Brown, leaving the little fish to 130. And he looks to just get back on track. And it seems a bit bizarre to say that for a man who's only lost one match. 60. In the last John couple Ricard, of days. 130. But doesn't want to leave the door open. One hundred and fourteen. Gary Carr, one hundred. Again, when you've won five on the trot and you lose one, it's easy to see that you've been derailed. It's it's uh it's not easy to overcome. Ninety eight. John Lucar sixteen. Which is why I'll be relieved to be getting these extra opportunities here. 
Double eight. It's almost too good a dart, that. Green He's shot on used the second it expertly lane. Brown. and leads 2 0. That's back to the John and JB that we saw yesterday. He had many of those Jean darts that were right on the He'll wire, used them to good effect. Fifty-seven. Unlikely that this will be a game that goes to the wire if he carries on with that sharp shooting. He will be in action again in a couple of games' time against Callum Francis. He would like to be 100. four points clear of him by that point. It would easy for it would have been easy for JB to think overnight. You know, I've got the two easier games 60. tomorrow morning. First thing. I've got Luke and I've got Gary. I'm only chasing a couple of wins. It would have been very easy to have turned his own head overnight. He's definitely bouncing back here. He's asserted himself on this match. 60. But just needs a couple more treble visits to set himself down. You know, when you consider 66. how well he did play yesterday and how dominant he was, in fact, in losing that opening match of today, he lost as many legs as he lost in the whole of yesterday's play. 57. Which is quite astonishing when you think about it, really. There's a good mentor at home and his father, Steve Brown, 16. obviously, he'll be watching. He'll be picking up bits that maybe they will talk about, or if anything like me and my daughter and our darts, we try not to talk about it. We try not 59. to spoil the relationship with darts talk. Sometimes I can't hold myself back. When I see something that's very visibly wrong, I have to say, which then ensues in a family row. 60. One three two for Hayes when he comes back. Now it'll be interesting to see the route. Twenty five. Gary O'Carr one hundred and thirty two. Doesn't need to go for the champagne shot here. Could just try and score a straight turn or ninety two. Forty five. So that's been a, a, again I don't want to bang on about it. One hundred and thirty-three. Gary, for Gary Hayes went on finishers, throwing a dart in the big one or the big five. Now he does have to go for the bolt. Fifty-five. John Newcar fifty. Tied at eighteen with the miss as well, but John he leaves thirty-two, which is a favoured route, similar to the last dart. Game shot on the third leg. Similar Jump result out. as well to the last leg. That is a big, big dart for John Brown to go 3 0 now. Hold Four his own Gary throw. Go first. Game on. He's had a chance there to break. I tell you what, as well, the maturity from John Brown with those last two finishes, that's the difference between a positive outlook and a negative outlook because the amount of times you 55. see a player plant a dart right on the wire. And they're shaking their head, they're shuffling over, they, they're basically telling everybody they don't think they can hit it before they've thrown it. And Brown twice has just adjusted. 26. And used the dart how he knows he can use it. Yeah, it's very easy when you've got one right on the wire to say, stuff my luck, that should be in, it should be. And uh, yeah, he doesn't. It's, it, it's, uh, 85. I think they call it wise beyond the years, I think, when, you're, when your mental state is like that. You never got there, did you, Scott? Never. 140. Yeah, really impressive maturity, composure. And he's back to the John Brown of yesterday. 100. He 
does win this match, he will be on 12 points from seven matches. 44. And his next game is against Callum Francis in a couple of games' time. Now, that's the man who's chasing him. If he wins that one as well, that will be enough for John Brown to get 121. through. One it would take him to 14, leave Francis on 8, and it would be a 6-point gap with just two games left to play. 177, John Ocar 156. Superb setup from Gary Hayes there. Sixteen. Well, Gary don't forget, 40. it is only his throw. So, this is the whole throw. Double ten. In it goes. Shot on the fourth leg. Gary Hayes. Gets a leg in a ledger against John Brown, who is showing his dominance from 24 hours ago in this match. Not the this way John does immense first. standard yeah. that he was producing then. But more than enough to have the beating of Gary. 100. One hundred and forty. Forty one. One hundred and twenty. Another one of those. Dart on dart outs from Gary Hayes there. 140. Gets a couple of those every day, doesn't he? I mean, it can be costly, particularly in these short format matches. 85. 85. Oh, lovely stuff. This is a, a really... Strong, solid, closing out of the contest. All that Gary Hayes can do now is take out the big finish himself. And he's not going to do it. 96, John O'Carr, 40. Score 180 for John Brown today. Double the tally that he had yesterday. Game that, shot on the match, that, John Brown. That is a very important dart for John Brown. A fist clench as he goes to the board. He knows how important that win was and to get... Back on the horse, if you like. John Brown, an 82 average. He won't be so concerned about the average. The impressive bit there, 40% on the checkouts. John Brown heads back to the top of Group C. Our next match will be Conan. Oh, no, I can't see my next match there. Ah, Luke Getty and Larry Butler after the break. Do apologise. See you soon.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where we are two rounds of fixtures down. Scott Mitchell is here with me on the balcony to assess what we have seen so far. Let's just go back to that last game, because maybe at the start of the session, defeat for John Brown, coupled up with results, maybe panic stations could have set in, but he'll feel much at ease now after that win. Well, he was having to play the two bottoms of the groups, and I, we, we mentioned it in commentary that overnight, that could have easily swung his head thinking, I only need a couple of wins. I've had me five out of five today. Two wins will see me through. And he was playing the two bottom guys in the group. And Luke Getty was not having any of that. So he opened up a can of worms there for John Brown. But John's got through that last one and one more win and he's home and dry, I think. As you say, mindset wise, he much better as well. Because if he loses that second game, things could then got a bit awkward. Conan with a level on points and Cannon with the chance to go on level on points of him. It could have been carnage. The only thing then he would have had in his favour was the legs difference from yesterday, which um, could have seen him OK, but you don't want to do it that way. You don't want to be taking it down that road. Meanwhile, Conan White, what a start it's been to his day so far. Two wins from two, dramatic in that final one as well. And he's managed to put himself in what looks like a really good position. Yeah, his legs difference is, is what's better than Callum's at the moment. So Callum really needs to win a couple of games big. But he's got tough games coming up as well, so that's going to be easier said than done. He's not out of it, but he's got work to do. Yeah, and I think he faces John Brown next, I think, so mm. that's a big game for him. Looking at the three at the bottom of the table, who would you say is the most likely to play the role of spoiler, potentially? I think, I think Larry Butler always plays the role of spoiler. He does seem to go up there and not have too many cares in the world. Whatever happens, if he hits a 24, he'll just follow it up with a 180 and get himself out of it. It is very impress impressive to watch. Difficult to watch if you're still behind him as an opponent because you really don't know where he's going. But I think he's in a relaxed mode, Larry, today, and, and uh, he could really be the spoiler. And he's up next against Luke Getty, who has improved today. We've seen some good stuff from him. It started last game yesterday. You know, he found out a bit about himself and he'd have been feeling better overnight with that game last night and he came back and he's he's had chances in other games that he's let slip a little bit particularly against Callum Francis so um, he'll be looking to return to to what he did last night and, and what he started this morning so saying that is our seventh game of the day the beginning of round three here at the Super Series so let's get into it Scott's gonna run down to the commentary box to join Chris Murphy Chris Henry, thank you very much. Yes, it is the last knockings really here for Larry Butler. He would be waiting on huge mistakes from Conan Whitehead in, if he is to somehow make it through. But defeat here would spell the end of the week for Butler, having come across from the US of A to compete at the Super Series. Shorter journey for Luke Getty. And he, well, really started today knowing he was playing for a little bit of pride. And just to show that he's worth an invite back. Well, I certainly think he is. First yeah. leg is Larry to throw first. No doubt I've learned lessons. Game on. From his last couple of days here at the live lounge. The big one. Maybe just to try and enjoy it more and not 44. be his own worst enemy. Be his opponent's worst enemy. That's what he wants to do, just as he was to John Brown earlier. But Brown has 45. bounced back from that defeat, winning against Gary Hayes 4-1 in the previous match. And it means that he's as good as their finals night, that is, along with Leonard Gates. In fact, mathematically... All he has to do, John Brown, is win his next match, and that will be that. One hundred and eighty. And that is another one eighty for Luke Getty. Fifty-eight. One hundred and forty. Nice little spell from Luke Getty. Every chance that if he does 
win a game or two more today, that he will lift himself off the bottom of the table. Eight That's always a nice little digital. target to play for when you're out of contention at the top end. And he's made a strong start in this one. He's going to leave himself on tops. Well, that was the intention. But he dragged it into the double. And now we'll just have to burn a dart in leaving a double when he returns. Fifty-seven. Look, your car twenty-one. Well, he's got all the time in the world here. This is the slow start from Larry Butler that Luke five will hope to make the most of. But don't forget, in his previous match, he did miss eight darts at double in the opening leg. Sixty. Which did burn Look, his fingers a little 16. bit at the end of the day. Uh, Getty coming in on double eight. Game shot on the first this leg. time he gets Luke it. Getty. An 18 dart, 17 dart leg. For Luke Getty. A uh, break a throw more significantly. Second leg, Luke to throw first. Game on. Yeah, that will be important to him that he didn't let that happen again when put in a similar position. Personal pride that he's playing for now. Okay. And, and, you know, he doesn't want to leave here. Feeling that he he he's sort of failed in what he planned to come here and do, which 59. all you can actually do is come here and try and play a certain game a certain way and set yourself a standard where you want to be. And and although it didn't go his way yesterday, if he can leave playing that standard, whether he's winning a few games or losing a few, he'll be happier all round. Yeah, I was just saying as you were making your way back downstairs from your chat with Henry that. If he does manage to win one or two more, he, he may even 99. lift himself off the bottom of the table, which is something to hold on to as well. Yeah, most definitely that, that would be something that he would be looking to do. But he definitely one just looks a little more focused here. And we know all players are good when they get in front. We're all the best front runners in the world when we're in front. Well, here comes Larry. One hundred and forty. Finally. Waking up into this game. That's his first three figure score in the match. Eighty. All the usual excitement of a Friday at the Super Series. Will your car one hundred and fifty eight? What an intriguing session it is, I Every game seems to have something on it. 58. Yeah, for Butler, that will be 103. all she wrote. In all honesty, if he does get beaten by Getty here. From top to bottom and back up. Game shot on the second leg. Larry Butler. Masterfully executed there by Larry Butler. Always a difficult shot, that, going from... Top of the tree, like down to, to the bottom first. of the tree, yeah. and back up to the top. This is the Moda Super Series. And you could 55. enjoy the action up close and personal tomorrow. 7.30 p.m. The action gets underway for finals night. Tickets available for free via dartshop.tv. I've actually seen Luke Getty in the audience a couple of times. Let's not forget, we always have the entertainer, Leonard Gates. And I believe if you, if you get here for about 7 o'clock, we're going to have some extra special entertainment. I think Harry, Henry Deacon's going to belt out a couple of karaoke numbers. 140. 40. Actually, cancel that. We want you to stay. 57. Ever heard Henry on the old uh, Let Me Entertain You? No, no, I've not heard Squeaky Deeks on that. What? How does he hit the high notes? Uh, well, 136. Only the dogs can hear him, put it that way. So you'd be all right. <laughs> well, or unfortunate, whichever the case <laughs> you said, whichever way round you said. 99. Look, your car, 170. Well, can Getty entertain us all with a 170 finish? Got to go for it, surely. 145. On the green, but not in the hole. A 
I think all here wanted that to go in for Luke. 100. Will your car 25? Sure is good. Friends and family watching on were at the edge of their seats there. He could not net the big fish. Nine. And now Poplar will get the chance to reel in the little fish. I'm not sure about calling him the eagle. I call him the wily old fox because these are the ones that he just pops up and robs. 94. Luke, your car 16. Well, it's a decent leave if Luke can't take out the remainder. But he Game can. Shot on the third leg. On his Luke advantage. Getty, Getty again. Fourth leg, Luke, to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. I think Luke should open some sort of uh, beauty retreat, you know. Well, it, it'll be spaghetti. One hundred and forty. The sound of tumbleweed. Been waiting all week to somehow shoot that sound. one in. Realised that it wasn't possible, so I just thought I'd say it anyway. Top pundit work there, mate. You actually lost me for words there. I had no what reply. Well, he knows where to go if he needs a butler. And Larry levelling the maximum count. 125. And 159, Luke Getty. Not by miscounting, but by misfiring. 88. The misfiring continues. So Butler will get the chance to break back in what has been a bit of a... 47, Mario Kart 93. A breakathlon, as Henry would call it. Fifty-three. Louis Kart 112. Nicely done. It's tops up. A ton plus for Luke, Game shot on the and he nails play. it in Luke that right-hand corner. I feel that was a big shot in the context of this match. Getty leads 3-1. Fifth leg, Laddie to throw first. Game on. Is that the first hole to throw in this game as well? Indeed it was. 59. means that Getty, who lost all of his matches yesterday, is on course to make it two wins from three today. And let's not forget, he only went down 4-3 in the game that he lost. 60. Ninety-eight. Improved performance here by Getty, as you can see with his averages. 140. Up there in the 90 pluses now. Uh, needs to find a treble now, Luke Getty. 79. I understand why Luke went for the 19s there, because he had a 9 on the end. 43. But sometimes, you know, when you when you hit, the, if you hit the single 19, that was okay. But once you hit the treble 19 on that visit, you have to clear off out. 58. Butler all over the place here. 63. Look at your car, 162. Bails himself out with a treble with the last start. Getty almost hit the 170 earlier in this match. Won't take out the 132, so it just gives Larry one 64. last chance. Larry, your car, 136. 
Some would say in the farming industry that Larry was doing a bit of muck spreading there on his previous visit. 42. Luke Lucar, 68. So Luke Detti looking a different player today. Game and it is two wins Luka. from three matches for the man who lost all five of his games yesterday. The only match he's lost today is the one that I predicted he would win. It's a 4-1 success over Larry Butler, whose hopes of qualifying for finals night are now effectively ended. It is Getty who takes the points in that one and, for the first time, lifts himself off the foot of the table. Well, we know which players won't be going through. We'll know one definitely that will be going through if John Brown beats Callum Francis after the break then he will secure his spot in Saturday's session. What a difference a day makes. 24 little hours for Luke Getty. A 4-1 victor over Larry Butler. It's his second win from three today. He did so with an 89 average, 112 higher. Larry Butler himself with a ton top in that one, but it is defeat for him. Let's see what it does to the league table ahead of a big game eight for us between Callum Francis and John Brown because I can tell you now in terms of the league table uh, John Brown leading the way on 12 points to cut away in 10 Callum Francis on 8 a big game this in coming in the race for finals night tomorrow and so to talk you through it is our all singing all dancing commentary duo of Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy thank you very much uh, no singing or dancing going on at the moment as we wait for this match to get underway, the table there showing John Brown on top and to confirm and just repeat what Henry said. If he wins, he's through. It is as simple as that now for John Brown. It was all looking good yesterday, but, you know, 10 points doesn't get you through. 14 points usually does and will in this case. Callum Francis would still have the chance to join him. 
He'd remain two points behind Cohen and Whitehead, but if Whitehead wins his next match against Gary Hayes, then that would be unlikely. So a big match for Francis and the match that could take Don Brown through to final night. First leg is Callum to throw first. Game on. He'll be the second confirmed name after Leonard Gates, who won Group A earlier in the week. One hundred. This really does feel like a do. One hundred and twenty-five for Callum. Yeah, you'd expect Whitehead to win the next match, and if he does that, then he's going to be four points clear if Francis 16. doesn't win this, and with only four points to play for, so it is a, a big, big bout for Francis. And with his legs 48. difference being so different, I think is the word we use, the legs difference being so different, uh, it would make it virtually impossible for him. To qualify. And I think he probably knows that he's had some fortune along the way. All of his wins have been 4-3. That's why he 100. is on a negative leg difference. And he won't see his visit here to the Moda Super Series as, as anything less than positive because... 95. His wins compared to games is sort of 50-50. He's... He's done good things when things have been asked of him under pressure. 100. Come to Carl, 120. He, he was one that's going to take a lot more out of this than, than, than when he came into the room yesterday morning. 101. John McCarl, 128. 128 then. Another if he chooses to stay there. 88, Colin McCarr, 25. It's not 1128. When you hit the 54, it's it's you've, you've got to really come out. Double eight for Francis to draw first 17. blood. John McCarr, 40. Big deflection there off of his. Condor flights those ones are up. Game shot on the first leg. John Brown. So hold a throw. Oh no, a breaker throw, sorry, for John Brown. Second leg, John to throw first. Game on. Meaning the probability in throwing first should mean that he gets to the double Eighty first five. at the end of the leg. One hundred. So if you have just joined us, good morning, darts fans. A recap of what's happened so far. Conan Whitehead ran right against this man. Callum Francis in the opening match of the morning. 4-0 to Conan in that one. John Brown was then beaten by then bottom of the table, 16. Luke Getty. His first win in game two before Larry Butler beat Gary Hayes 4-1. Callum Francis got another 4-3 win. His fourth of the group when he 100. played Luke Getty. Conan Whitehead won by the same margin against Larry Butler. John Brown then beat Gary Hayes 4-1 to get back on track. And Getty made it two wins from three 100. in the previous Come match. The car, and he bettered Butler. And it all means that really it's now... Three-man race. One that John Brown has almost won. And it'll be between Callum Francis and Conan Whitehead to battle it out for the other spot, you would feel. 30. Callum McCarr, 64. And that would be pretty much a winner-takes-all match, really, to a certain extent. 46. John McCarr, 126. Just opens the door for Brown. Find a way round that 54. blocker. 
Come on, we'll cry. Choices here for Francis split or hit. Split. Game shot on the second and leg. Come on, Francis. I mean, it wasn't intentional, was it? But that was the outcome in the end. Third leg, Callender through first. It was Come nearly on. a burst as well as a split. It was a, a nearly a nothing. 97. So why are we saying that we need people when they're going for that double nine to go for the bottom corner of double nine? So that should they stray? 81. It's a technical split. Are you a, a player who aims for specific spots? On targets, or do you just sort of aim 95. for the general target itself? No, I try to be flash. I try to hit smack bang dead centre. I think every player aims for the centre, whether it leaves One the hand or the fingers or the grip or whatever in the right manner is another story. But yeah, another are some players who will, for example, go for top wires, bottom wires on the trebles because of the way their darts lie. But it shows you sometimes if that's the truth, and players always go for the the centre, the dead centre of Coming doubles, and they sweep one in the corner. It's a pretty bad dart. It's just gone in, hasn't it? I would absolutely agree. You know, you you wipe your brow when one of those happens. I'm a one hundred. Uh, it depends how your darts fly. Mine, mine, mine tend to to just kick by a millimetre or two as they enter the board just before entry. Sixty. Um, Coming your car seventy. So I'm tend to be an outside wire aimer on doubles but still to be smack bang center 50 john your car 160 well, not a bad attempt from callum francis but it's a missed dart a double all the same he will be back though to lead this match One hundred. come to car 20. Game shot on the third leg. Callum Francis. It's always an interesting scenario when a player's got a match to win to get through at this point of the day because how different it can be if they lose the match. Both leg John to third first. John Brown game here, on. if he wins the game, he's through. But if he loses it, then he could be in trouble. He still has to play Conan Whitehead, 51. who's in second place. So that means that it's kind of in everybody's hands between the three of them because Francis, if he wins his remaining match, then White had beat Brown. Then that would see Brown drop to third place and out of the top two. And having to face Larry Butler last game and 81. who knows which Larry will turn up. It would be a really intriguing 30. end to the day. The opposite scenario, of course, is that Brown wins this, Whitehead wins the next match, and it's as good as done. My mental state here, if I was playing, would be I would try to know that Callum needs to win this desperately to still be in it, rather than I would than I would be looking at myself saying I need to win it to definitely qualify. I think I would 60. I would be playing this one in my head that he has to win this game. And that would have really relinquished a little bit of the pressure off myself, is the way that I'd look at this one. 100. Yeah, it's a strange scenario because it's not that John Brown just has to win one more game to qualify. It's that if he wins this game against the man that's 59. able to John stop him, he would qualify. Six starts at 170. But we'd like to see it in three. And that one looks so nicely 97. set as well for for the second to follow. Brown perfectly poised on 73. 60. John Yukar, 73. We'd like this to be nice and clean and two darts. There's one. Not quite with the second. Slightly 69. delaying the double action there. Not going to see the 170 in this leg. 
134, John Yukar, four. Game shot on the fourth way. So John double Brown. two for two two. Can be a tendency as a player when you're going for a double to just take the gas off a little bit. You know, when you're thrown at the treble 20, it's dumb, 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 and you keep the yeah. gas on full bore and how how you throw the dart and the, the force that you throw it with stays with. But sometimes when you go to the double, you seem to take the gas off a little bit, causing the dart to react in a slightly different way. And... A dart that leaves your hand with full 96. gas that would go in when you haven't got the full gas on. It drops a little shy. But you thinking in your head that you've done everything right and it's been let go in the right place in the right state 83. for it to go in. So pressure does silly things to the mind and the arm. And I think the point that you made a few moments ago about how the players are approaching this match. I think John Brown is a man that seems to be putting more pressure on himself. But he is very much seeing it as a match that he needs to win to qualify. 100. Rather than looking at it, that it's a match that Callum Francis absolutely has to win. Hmm. And that would be your plus in your mental state in this game, if that makes any sense whatsoever. 95. Yeah, John's got an insurance policy. Callum hasn't at all. Which, in theory, should make it an easier game for John. But at the moment... It's not been that way. 60. Well, we're at that Jennifer 170 again. Surely it's destined to go in this darts duel. Keep leaving it. Oh. Not to be on this occasion. It's a, a big miss, a big heavy 24. arm there from John Jennifer Brown. And he's not even left a better finish than Francis. Wrong to say, but those 170s, you really need to turn 80. the corner as minimum Jonathan requirement when you're going for those. You need to hit a treble. Brown needs to hit a treble to get a dart at the ball here. Can't manage it, so Francis will return again with that split or hit decision. 86. What, we, what do you Coming think you'll do this 58. time? Double 14, double 12, double 7, double 12. Oh, he splits intentionally this time. Game and shot on the fifth works leg. a treat. Callum, and Callum Francis has three legs, and usually when he gets three legs, he gets four. Callum Francis, he wins 4-3. That's what he does. Six legs on to throw first. Game on. Forty-two. Bit of a scrappy start there from John Brown. Jumped on immediately by Callum Francis with the momentum of winning that last leg. 57. One hundred. Well, our thing's going to start to get very, very interesting in this group. Callum Francis. Halfway down the leg. In with a chance 100. to beat the league leader, the runaway league leader yesterday, John Brown. Won all of his matches. But a win here from Callum Francis would mean two points separate the top three. And any two of them could go through. 92. Callum McCall, 121. Good first start from Callum Francis. He's 48 89. left. He's 32. No out for John Brown. He would just hope to hit a 180 here, surely. Is he going 54? 122. Callum McCall, 32. Went for the bullseye. But it's three clear darts for Callum Francis. To blow the race. The finals night wide open Game and he's done it. The match. It's Francis. his best win of the week and suddenly John Brown is looking over his shoulder. It looked like all he had to do was turn up and win a couple of matches but he's lost a couple and he's lost that one.
to one of the chasing pack. Things are getting very interesting in Group C, and it could have been all but done. Now it's anything but. Do stay with us because the other man in contention to make it through, Conan Whitehead, is in action after the break. He takes on Gary Hayes. Welcome back to the Mojas Super Series where things really are beginning to get interesting here in Group C and that is because of a 4-2 victory for Callum Francis against John Brown. What that does in terms of the league table, John Brown stays on 12 points but it's getting very, very tight in the race for second with both Coda Whitehead and now Callum Francis level on 10 points a piece well next up for us it is conan whitehead in action he takes on gary hayes conan can join john on 12 points if he can pick up victory in this one and to find out if he can do exactly that here's chris murphy and scott mitchell Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. I've lost the screen here in my technical booth. <laughs> so I don't quite have the pictures to bring you, but I do have the summary. First leg is Gary to throw Group first. Group C, John Brown. Game on. Does stop the group just about. 50. At Conan, Whitehead, and Callum Francis. Hot on his heels. Conan. 140. Heads off with a 140. 
One under the net. Gary Hayes thrown with a bit of freedom now. Follows with a 180. And Conan. 140. Another 140. Good start to this darting duel. Wyatt can go joint top on 12 points with a win. He still does have 41. John Brown to play as well. One hundred and forty. Hat trick of ton forties from Whitehead to leave eighty one. Sixty. After Common nine. Lucar eighty one. Wonder if he'll go for the ball this time. One seventy. He's not been doing that today and he's carrying on with that plan. Forty nine. Got a new car one hundred and seventy. But not to be this time from Hayes. 58. Cornell car 32. Twenty-eight. Gary Lucar one hundred and twelve. That's a sign of Conan knowing the importance of the leg. Gary Hayes should be throwing with freedom now. Playing for pride. And double sixteen. Eighty. Cornell car four. Almost picked Conan's pocket. Double one. The white head. Can he glide it in off that barrel? He, he can. The first leg. Conan Whitehead. It is. A break of throw for White Ted. Yeah, Gary Hayes playing with freedom, but also playing to get himself off the bottom of the table, which is not a position he would have expected to find himself Something in. Like but full to credit first, game to Luke Getty, winning two of his three games so far today. Is that One Conan hundred. hitting third dart again? Yeah, it certainly has been a feature of his success. 140. One of them is a little bit of a Henry at the end of that call, Paul Hinks. 125. I hope it doesn't put him off him now knowing that he is my favourite 180 caller. 85. Have you ever uh, refereed games of darts? Have you got your own unmistakable 180 call? Do you know what? I, I actually had to referee some games uh, between 60. the AFC Bournemouth crew uh, team about a few years ago. Uh, I was invited in. Uh, something to do with Premier League TV and I stood by the board. Yeah, um, 80. in my dart shirt trying to add up the numbers and I think it was it was a higher score with nine darts thing or whatever, and I just failed miserably at adding them up because I was used to taking them away. It's so different. And nobody hit a 180, I assume, so he didn't Conor get the chance to no. bellow one out. No, I don't think so. I think it was it was a few years ago now, so I think it was Benekophobi, the Game shot on this amazing second centre Conor forward, old-fashioned centre forward for Bournemouth, and, uh, and, and the Bournemouth legend Steve Fletcher was at a pairing, and I think they won... The coveted uh, high score with nine dart Little trophy Gary had it together. First. Game on. It's a popular game with footballers, isn't it, to, to do in the spare time. There are a few quite handy players as well. Uh, James Madison was at the Alley Pally and he's 59. handy with the arrows. In fact, when we were playing behind closed doors, he was a footballer's special. I, I find it great how different sports enjoy 100. other top sportsmen enjoying their sport kind of thing. I've I've been to a few things, obviously, with, with, with Bournemouth for the football. I've been to uh, 100 super bikes, the British super bikes, when Leon Haslam was, was racing for uh, Bournemouth Kawasaki. Bit of friend Pete, he runs there. Because I used to race motocross back in the day, so Peter now has his own, own sort of Bournemouth Kawasaki superstore where you can... Get all your road bikes, street bikes, and everything. And he ran a team. And also, I'm friends with Paul Denning, who, who was a world superbike manager of was Suzuki and now Pat Yamaha. 55. And, uh, he has a shop down in Verwood, a big superstore called uh, Crescent Motorcycle. So, 
been around those guys as well, and they love the fact that dart players love the the, the bikes, and too. I've been over there and threw a few darts in their shop. So, yeah, it's good fun. Well, Whitehead is motoring in this match. Looking to make it 3 0 in 100. double quick time here. Carry your car, 120. If he's to do that, and after rely on Gary Hayes not taking out this 1 2 6. One treble 19 required to leave the ball. Not in. 58. Corner car, 106. Another tidy dart player back in the day was Ben White. I used to play darts against his dad in local leagues, and he obviously now signed for Arsenal. And he could throw a mean dart when he was 14. I even tried to get him to give up football. What do I know? He probably made the right choice. Fifty-two. Cornell car sixty. And Gary Hayes can't defend his throw. Game shot. That's a great dart line. from Conan Whitehead. Whitehead. To race into a three-leg lead and. Going to be another convincing win here for Conan. That leg difference that John Brown had over Conan Ball White is Conan getting smaller Game and on. smaller. One the the one this is dangerous for is obviously, or or bad for, is, is, is Callum Francis because of his leg differences. He's so far behind now, the front two. He's still a minus. Five wins, 60. three defeats, and a minus leg difference for Callum Francis. Four perfect darts. We've had five a few times. We haven't had six. We've had One six. Not only on a nine darter, that was his ninth 180 of the group. 85, Cornucar 141. The perfect leg to win the match. Will not happen. 57. You won't mind about that. He just wants to slam the door shut. Good respect there from Gary Hayes, who's probably in a bit of a daze at the moment. 60. Konuka, 84. Definitely a bit of shoulder in the last one from Hayes there, but it's 84 from Conan. He's just laughed at himself there, hasn't he? After being so perfect throughout the leg, then hitting a big one. He went from so perfect to so imperfect that you couldn't believe it himself, could he? Being himself up, wants it done. 45, Conor Carl, 56. Tops. Double 10 to go joint top. 46. I don't believe it. Did he miss with his last dart there? Well, it certainly won't be the last dart he throws in the leg because Gary Hayes is way back on over 250 points. Can still leave a finish if he slams that there. Well, this would be remarkable if White was to lose a leg, but he won't. He'll win and he'll win 4 0. And he'll go joint top, and it's 12 points apiece now between Conan Whitehead and John Brown at the summit of the Group C table. And not only that, Callum Francis is in action next, and he will have the opportunity to beat Larry Butler and make it a three-way tie at the top of the table. Who saw that coming? But what a performance from Conan Whitehead. He is certainly making his move on Friday here at the Super Series.
This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. perennial darting event in amateur darts the Moda super series and what an exciting friday morning we are seeing here at the live lounge in Porsche. if it continued following a 4-0 win for conan whitehead just there against gary hayes doing so with a 91 average and three 180s to his name it means in terms of the league table he joins john brown on 12 points at the top of the table so two's company frees a crowd we don't mind a freeway here at the Modus Super Series, and that's exactly what we might get if Callum Francis can get victory here. And to describe all of that, here's Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Just the two of us in the commentary box, and we'll keep it that way. Thanks very much, Henry. As Callum Francis bids to stay in that three-man race for the top two. Every match today seems to have been just tiptoeing across the tightrope and he's just clinging on, keeping himself in contention, much because of John Brown's disastrous day so far. It has to be said, just one win from his three match and he's got a couple of toughies before the end of the day. Brown against Whitehead and Butler. He'll be hoping that Butler can do him a favour and just make him breathe a little bit easier here by beating Callum Francis. Francis is, uh, has been asked the questions on many occasions. First leg Today. is Callum to throw first. And he keeps answering them. He Game keeps on. he keeps backing himself, and I think that's great. For one so young and in his debut here at the Super Series, it's he's another one that's gonna leave here. No matter what happens, he's he's learnt a lot about himself and and the Moda series, Super Series triumphs again with a player, I think. Yeah, two more rounds of matches. Three players in contention. John Brown on 12, Conan White on 12, Callum Francis on 10. But the caveat to that story One is that Brown and Whitehead will play each other in a couple of games' time, which means that if Francis wins this, he will be tied on 12 points a second Let's place see. at the end of this round of fixtures and it will go down to our final round of fixtures the big problem for francis is that all his wins have been by the smallest margin possible apart from the last one 44. where he won four two over john brown and that is why he's on a minus leg difference 13 worse off than conan whitehead 17 worse off than john brown 82. could come down to that and you have to say that would be unfortunate if it did but it's all, all kind of been caused because John's 135. only won one of his three matches. And what could have, we could have had a lot of dead rubbers here this morning when we came in. And it's now not turned out to be that Colin way. Car, 122. And, and part of me said, you know, it's, it, it's not really been been John's fault. It's it's the others have stepped up against him as much as he's missed chances. You can't you can't look 54. at JB and say that, Mother you know, he's... 84. He's played atrociously bad, and that's why it's not worked. So everybody he always guns for the man line. at the Ronnie top. Butler. That's all I know. Well, Brown will be as happy as Larry right now after watching Butler take out that leg in 14 darts, treble 16, double 18 to complete the 84 Second combination. Leg, first. Game on. And Butler breaks throw. Francis has to have the attitude here. Of, I'll get you, Butler. 100. But he probably doesn't even know what that means. He's not the only one. 60. Yeah, sorry about my aged on the buses reference. I'm sure a few of our viewers would be well 100. familiar. I'm sure Larry would be familiar with that. Okay. 
If anyone wants to see the Welsh Open venue on screen, 100. on the buses, Holiday 1976 is the one to watch. All filming was filmed at Pontins in Prestatyn, which is where the Welsh Open is played. I will look it up as soon as I leave the commentary box today, Scott. Many a great time has been had there. 43. What are your car one? A lot of updates have been done to the place. There's a roof on the swimming pool now, I think. You'll see different between 1976 and now. 65. Well, speaking of the roof, Larry Butler is raising it here. This is a performance of the highest quality, and this is exactly the opposite 60. of what Callum Francis what are your needed. Car 56. 56 for a, another 14 dart leg. And he's he got it. 28 leg. darts Larry to win Butler. the first couple of legs. And Larry Butler, well, that all amounts to an average of over 107. 30 points more than Callum Francis. So Just Callum hasn't given Francis a look in, has he? Six days. One hundred and thirty-four. That start on the top wire for Larry is difficult. We've seen that all week. That the top treble twenty wire. He then comes straight out and goes down for the nineteens with much success. This could end up being the display of the week so far. Larry Butler can't qualify for finals night, but ninety-two. What a level he's producing in this match. Ninety-seven. And if Callum Francis does lose it, of course, he wouldn't yet be out of it because the next matches be between John Brown and Conan Whitehead. But he'd be as good as because the leg difference is so poor that he'd probably need uh, one of them. Well, he'd need Brown really to absolutely demolish Whitehead, wouldn't he, to have any chance of turning around that, that swing of legs in the last match. Forty-four. One hundred and thirty-four. Mario Kart, one hundred and four. Just getting confirmation that actually, if Callum loses, he will be out. Uh, production's team's maths are quicker than mine, and Larry Butler's Larry finishing. Butler. In this game, is sublime. Three out of three. His average remains up at 105. This is sensational from Larry Butler. Both like Larry did third first. Game on. Where has this Larry been this week? If this Larry had been here, 83. Or something not far away, he would have comfortably got through Group A. 99. And I don't like to say we've seen him roll back the years, but this is one impressive performance from Larry Butler. Very impressive indeed. 125. So just when it looked like it was going to go the distance, Larry Butler turns up. You said at the start of the show, who will be the spoiler? You were asked that question by Henry Deacon. You said Larry Butler is always the spoiler, and he's going to spoil our fun here, because if this match ends... With him as the winner, it will mean the bridge will be too far. Callum 59. Francis, with one game left to play, he'd only be able to get to 12 points. And because all of his wins have been so small, the leg difference is going to matter, meaning that he cannot and will not 57. make it through to finals night. He has to win the next four legs. It's as simple as that. Twenty-eight. Performance of his 100. week, certainly, for Larry Butler.
Callum has gradually seen his average rise over the course of this match up to the mid 80s. Callum McCarr, 125. Larry seems to have blown the turbo that he's been on in the last three legs in this one. Leg four. 49. Larry O'Carr, 122. Let's do it in style. Treble 18. Treble 18. Treble 18. 90. To leave Come double 16. 76. Sixty, Lottie O'Connor, thirty-two. So Butler for thirty-two, and a four-nil spoilers win. Game shot, and he achieves match. it. Butler. What a finish, and what a match from Larry Butler. By far his best of the week. You can see there that ninety-five average, running a hundred most of the match. Check out percentage, highly impressive at eighty percent. It's time for a break, and we'll see you on the other side. And the eagle has landed. Larry Butler landing the fatal blow for Callum Francis, which means we now know the two players who are going to make it through to tomorrow night's final, courtesy of Group B. And so it is congratulations going to John Brown and Conan Whitehead, the man who always seems to make Saturday night here at the Moda Super Series. And he has done it again. Callum Francis now eliminated from the process well next up for us it's the game between luke getty and gary hayes both of these players who have a couple of games to go for their week here at the super series and both looking to end on a high and so to describe this one is chris murphy and scott mitchell thank you very much h it is the battle at the bottom the fight at the foot the clash of the cellar dwellers here at the super series and it is a, a meeting of of pride, isn't it? We've mentioned that word a few times, and this pair of 
known that that's what they're playing for. It's been a debut for Gary Hayes this week. Doesn't want to end it bottom of the table. He lifts himself off it if he can beat Luke Getty in this one. But if Getty wins, it's turning into a very, very productive day for him. Yeah, very much so. He can he can go away knowing that he's righted a few wrongs from yesterday, but in the shape of the group, the tide has been out for both of these guys here in Portsmouth and haven't quite managed First leg, Luke, you through first. Game to get on. to the heights where they were hoping to be. We know it's been a very difficult week for Gary Hayes. Not just on the board, and we feel for him 100. in that. And you have to say his character to still want to come down and play this week. 85. Has to be commended. Well, qualifying is in itself an achievement, isn't it, for Gary Hayes and anybody who makes it through the amateur dart circuit system. 140. Yeah, and I'm sure the the list of names who are who are putting themselves forward to try and come along and play in this mode of Super Series is longer than my arm and your arms put together, Murph, I reckon. Yeah, it's a very sought-after tournament to play, and why wouldn't it be with the experience on offer? 96. The prize money on offer. One hundred and forty. TV coverage as well. The TV coverage of this is top drawer. One hundred. Will your car one hundred and forty eight? Double fourteen. Ah, oh, what a start from Luke way. Getty. Luke Getty. Applauded by Gary Hayes. Well, this is a different player to the man we saw yesterday. Who was that Luke Getty impersonator who turned up here and lost all his matches? So Haven't like seen him today. First game on. I bet he wishes it was Thursday morning and not Friday morning, or Friday afternoon as we are now. 100. Well, Group C is signed and sealed, as Henry described before this match. John Brown and Conan Whitehead are the men joining Leonard Gates at finals night. 59. But who's looking forward to Group B this evening? It is a very fiercely fought group between five players trying to battle it out. Three of them will get through. Owen Bates leading the way after the opening night. Colin Osborne, One Rob 14. Collins, Prakash Jiwa, and Adam Hunt all still very much in the race. I'm looking forward to it like That's a hungry it. horse on an empty stomach. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it that much. So I'm not coming. <laughs> yeah, I won't be here this evening. Corin Hammond will be filling 79. my shoes. Not a bad swap, really. Well, towards the end of the week and coming, getting towards finals night, you've got to bring the glamour in, haven't you? 135. Yeah, rather placate what, what else is on offer in the commentary box. Your first full week in the commentary box. I know you've joined us before 59. for the odd Gary session. Have you enjoyed what you've seen? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And what I love is I'm getting to see and meet new players. 74. And look at your car, 164. Dark players tend to warm to one another, even though we're competitors. We tend to think a little bit the same. It's nice to meet like-minded people. Got your car 32. Double 16 then. Yeah, he's there it the is. Second leg, Gary Hayes. And it's been a good week as well because it's been very exciting groups. Third leg, Luke, you throw first. Game on. And this one has been big games all the way through and. Even with this one, 
here comes Luke again. Oh, the matey! It was building up to a real grandstand finish, wasn't it? And then Larry Butler pulled the rug from under the feet of Francis with that 4 0 win in the previous match. What a standard we're seeing from this pair here. Forty-four. Is this a sign that when there's nothing to play for, then you can just relax and throw your best stuff? Well, the gloves are off. Nobody's restricting themselves. One hundred. Throwing freely, and now starting to enjoy it. And now we're starting to see the real Gary Hayes and the real Luke Getty. Sixty. A reminder, following this, four 16. games still to come. John Brown against Conan White are the two players that can now relax, knowing they're going through to finals. Now, still battling out for first place, as the advantage that that brings at finals night. And then Hayes takes on Francis. Butler meets Brown before Getty closes the show in Group C when he goes up against Whitehead. Should we just explain 16. the advantages Booker that brings on finals night for those it's, that don't know? Yeah, it's... It's arguable, isn't it? Because it's about which group you go into by winning your group. It, you, you supposedly have a better group, but then again, all Each the players the are leg. pretty Luke decent, Getty. aren't they? So determines the order of the fixtures and the groups that you're in out of the three. And to be fair, we have struggled to separate them with all these games. So yeah. the one-off games on Saturday night well, could be the very exciting. Yeah, for those who haven't, been to a finals night or seen a finals night before. It's a different format to what we see the rest of the week. Two groups, three players in each, little round robin format, and the group winners and second place go through to the semi final. So the winner of group one 95. will play the runner up of group two in the semis and have the throw of the group one winner. That's an advantage of topping the group. But we do have the prospect, and we've had a couple here at the Super Series of nine dart shootouts. If all three matches have the same result with one win to each player and the group is determined by a three-way nine dart shootout on the stage 100 yeah we did have that on my first night here 45. i believe a 12 dart shootout well that yeah ended up with two players level didn't it Ninety-six. Remember rightly, Richie Howson was looking for needed twenty points to to level. Could have gone for twenty-five to win. Hit a twenty. Ended up going out. Is it Chris Mason and Tony O'Shea. I know Mason was involved. I remember Mason was involved. I remember another one with Andy Hamilton. Eighty-five. Who's actually been involved in nine dart shootouts before? Has had one at the Grand Slam. In fact, had two at the Grand Slam. The Hammer. Some players will never go through that in his career. He's been through it three times. One hundred. Look your car. One hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a two-two in sets and a five-five in legs. Last leg decided with Tony O'Shea. Can't remember what year it was. One hundred. Back in two thousand and fifteen. Look your car. One hundred twenty-five. First round match, I believe. We're well, starting on the fifteens there. Luke Getty on the one two five almost taking it out, but he'll be back for the remainder and to put some distance between himself and Gary Hayes, not just in terms Perfect. of the match, but if he wins the match Luke in terms 25. of the league table. Double eight. And still nine. Gary Ukwan ninety six. Eighty-eight. Look your car. Sixteen. Game shot on the four flag. Luke Getty. Nineteen dart leg there from Luke Getty as he takes a three-one lead. Three flag. Luke to throw first. Game on.
96. One leg away then Getty from a, another victory on what has been a very good day for him. Didn't win a single match yesterday. This would be three out of four. 140. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Five years when I travel twenty best. That's a loose one there from Getty. Forty one. He's effectively turning the throat, but he needed one of those, and 100. second would have been handy. 100. Top two waiting to battle it out for top spot in the next match, Brown and Whitehead, but the bottom Go two trying to avoid the wooden spoon here. The bullseye for Gary Hayes. 96. Luke Getty get a go at the same target. He'll start on treble 20, across to treble 18 on the same shot. And he'll stay there. 92. So picked up a 92. 25. Well, Gary Hayes has struggled sometimes hitting the big number. Only just managed to avoid the double there. He's avoided the double there, but he didn't Are want to. And leg? that's what he Gary wants. Hayes. And it's very much game on in this one. He has a dart for 3-3. Three, three. Which is for the two players just Six a leg, smidge Gary under 90 first. after Game these on. five legs. A fast improvement for them both. 95. 123. Ninety five. One hundred and thirty four. Sixty. Fifty-eight. When I have good games in shirts, I cut the corner off the label and make sure it's one of my lucky shirts. And I wonder if Luke Getty will be doing that with 100. this one this week. Although it is very different to his others. It's almost like he sent his his doppelganger in yesterday. Forty-five. Gary Carr, one hundred and fifty-one. One four one versus one five one. There's the one. Forty one. Look your car one hundred and forty one. So treble nineteen for double twelve for Luke Getty. One hundred and seventeen. Got your car one hundred and ten. Last chance for Hayes to force a decider. One ten. Starting up. Can't get a dart at double, so Getty will come back. 86. Three at double 12. Luke Lukar, 24. And carry on this fantastic day for him. And it is Being three wins the match, from four matches for glorious Getty, who puts two points between himself and Gary Hayes, who is stone bottom of the table. What a way to start that match, a 1-4-8 checkout. 50% on the doubles and an average North of 90 for Getty, who goes into his last game off the bottom and looking good. Coming up next, it's the top two about to do battle as John Brown meets Conan Whitehead on their victory parade.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where it is yet another win for Luke Getty. What a day he is having today here at the Super Series. That time 4-2 against Gary Hayes, 90 average from him, as well as that 1-4-8 checkout and 50% on his doubles. Our next game sees John Brown take on Conan White. Both of these men are through to tomorrow night's final. Brown winning all five games yesterday. Conan White with a big spurt today. He is through to Saturday night as far as he always seems to be here at the Modus Super Series. And he will be playing here tomorrow on his birthday as well. So it's going to be quite the treat for him. And hopefully this will be quite the treat for us as Conan Whitehead takes on John Brown. And it is going to be watched by Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. I hope you've got the cakes ready, guys. No, I'm more of a sandwich man myself or maybe a sausage roll. When you're my size, all you do is roll anyway. So, probably a little relief in the way that the previous results have gone. For these two guys, they know approaching the board, they are both through. This one could have a say in who goes through in the top of the group, obviously. But I think when targets are set at the start of these groups, the idea is just to get through. I don't think anybody. First leg is John to throw first. Would be brash enough to set the thing Game to on. say that they want to go to through top of the group. They just want to get out of the group. John Brown, though, might just Game be on. wanting to try and get some confidence building again by the end of the day after what's been a disappointing one for him. Polar opposite, of course, 90. for Conan Whitehead, who is looking to work his way through the field. Winning all of his matches would be some wave to ride into 60. finals night. Six days. Fifty-nine. Okay, did you start here from these two fellas? Forty-one. Not sure if that's out of respect for the situation. It looks to be one of those games. As soon as somebody jumps in on the trebles, the other will follow. Here we go. Conan's jumped in. Jumped in twice. 140. Leave him the big fish. 170 after 12. Right on cue. 100. Conan Carl, 170. Well, they're both through. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. 122. First start looked absolutely perfect, didn't it? Conan White had to follow. 140, Conan Carl 48. Double 16. Game shot on the first leg, Conan Whitehead. Yeah, really well done that because he only had two thirds of the bed to aim at with that final dart, but You've picked up on it all week, Scott. It's Conan Whitehead, last start in hand. Second leg, Conan to throw first. Game on. You'd almost call him Mr. 33%, wouldn't you? 11. 30. We were asking what had happened to the Luke Getty of yesterday. I'm now starting to wonder what's happened to the John Brown of yesterday. 83. You're right in what you're saying. He 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 stayed overnight on 10 points and he's only got his tally 140. Up to 12. And he'll be disappointed with that when he goes back in the short term. But 
One on the zone! Okay, here comes Conan. Yeah, the good news is that they all start on the same come finals night. 140. Fifty-seven. That's Conan's tenth one eighty of this group. Fifty-eight. Conan Carl one hundred and seventy. Right in the ninth match, so he's been having a one eighty in every game, effectively. Forty-eight. John Carl one hundred and thirty-three. Eighty-three. Conan tried Conan to convince me yesterday that it was his thirty-first birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Double seven here. One hundred and eight. John Lucar fifty. Go straight for it, John. No messing about. Game All right, do it your way. way. Fair John enough. Brown. All square. The winner of this match will be outright top of the table after it. John Brown playing Larry Butler so like in John his final game. game. John and Whitehead taking on Luke Getty. 57. 100. Larry Butler, Callum... Larry Butler, sorry, can still... Get ahead of Callum Francis in the group as well if he 100. beats Brown. If he plays like he did in the last one, he'd be a very difficult man to beat, Larry Butler. 44. 59. 140. Whitehead back in the lipstick. John Brown's throat. First two 58. legs have gone against the throat. Been breaks. Conan effectively has turned the throw into his favour. 100. And he's scoring over the last 12 darts. Reset there from John Brown. 40. Conan Carl 117. 17. Leaves tops. Having to shuffle across slightly to get a In sight of it. But he got a sight Conor of it. Whitehead. And he found it perfectly. 2-1. Break of throw to boots. Fifteen dart leg. Four fight corner to go first. Game on. Another ton plus finish for Whitehead. 125. 180 looked on the cards again there for Conan, but just slid down the outside of. 100. Barrel a slight deflection over into the five. We know who's through from this group, Scott. It's okay. the two men we're watching right now, but who do you think will join them? Which three do you see making it through from that difficult to pick group B tonight? Well, 93. You're asking the question now, really, aren't you? Because we know that that was one hell of a group. But I'd say, I think Adam Hunt 98. is still... One of the favourites to go through. Colin Osborne has a little bit to do in that group. But you still feel that he's going to make it. But the spoiler really was Rob Collins last night. Put himself in a position 
to threaten 58 the three no, no, favorites who we thought would go through i mean imagine that come finals night whoever makes it through leonard gates will probably be the favorite great darts here from john brown though 102 that mainly off the back of a of a really good campaign in group a uh and being very impressive at the end when he needed to be so yeah, quite rightly, I think, on form on alone, he would be the bookie's favourite. Yeah, and at the seniors, of course, where he's averaging in the 90s for most of his matches until he lost in the semis. No score. Well, that Cornel Carl, 40. Is too many. For John Brown. And that's Being just the right away. amount for Conan Whitehead, Whitehead, who leads this match 3-1. This leg John to serve first. Game on. One hundred. One hundred. Eighty five. Should John Brown lose this one? Forty one. He would be looking in his last aim to find some momentum to get out, you know, to finish the group off, to finish with a win. Because he'll need that going into Saturday night, I believe. He doesn't really want to limp over the line. 123. Yeah, I felt that he would have probably been frustrated not to have made it into Group B because, as we mentioned, he does have a preference of playing in the evening. 60. So to have finished outside the top three in Group A would have been a, a bit of an annoyance for Conan Whitehead. One hundred and eighty. But he's going to be buzzing, brimming with confidence, and John Brown might be the opposite. He's going to have to sixty reset Colin and refocus 57. tomorrow night. Doesn't really matter that he's missed that. Well, he okay. I get going. He went for the eighteens, knowing that if he did miss. Then he'd hit a four and would have a shot at the ball. 15. John Ducar, 138. It was a lovely setup for Whitehead there. That was his 11th 180 of the group. Oh, big deflection there for John. 86. John Ducar, 42. So back across to his favourite double sixteen, and then he drops one just underneath. Game shot of the match, Connor Whitehead, and that was the conclusion of the big game of Group C. Connor Whitehead wins four-one, just shy of the ninety average. Check out stats there: four out of eight, fifty percent. Not too shabby. We'll leave you now. Go and grab yourself a cup of tea and come back with us after the break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Kona Whitehead has rounded off the ninth round of fixtures of a 4-1 win against John Brown. What a Friday he's having here at the Super Series. A 90, uh, sorry, an 87.92 average, two maximums, a 117 high out in that 4-1 success. We can have a look and see what that does to the table now following nine games for everyone. As you can see, that win has now actually put Conan Whitehead top of the table on 14 points. Now, you may remember Scott Mitchell early on this morning say, Conan Whitehead to win this group could be value with the bookmakers. He may well be right. John Brown, who was priced at one to four to do so, is second on 12 points. Not only matters, they're both through, so they will be jostling for top position in our final two matches of the session. Next up for us is the beginning of round 10 of 10 in Group C. It's going to be a final appearance of the week for Gary Hayes. He's been with us since Monday morning, the ADC qualifier. He takes on Cannon Francis, who has just missed out on finals night on his debut in this competition. So to describe this one in the commentary box, here's Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Cheers, Henry. Yes, Hayes will be on his travels after this match. Back up to the north of England. By the way, if anybody is travelling north today, just do be careful. There is a, a storm battering the country at the moment. Might be worth just delaying any travel plans until later in the day. But the ADC qualifier, Gary Hayes, will be making that trip at some point. And it's a chance for Scott Mitchell. It's a chance for you to offer a few words on what you've seen, what you think he might have learned, what you would want him to learn this week. No. First leg is Gary to throw first. Greater opportunity for Gary Hayes if he watches this back. Well, I think both players came in with, with very different opportunities here. And, and, and Gary Hayes came into the week, 60. obviously, with, with some sad, sad news. And he soldiered on this week. He soldiered on. But, but for me, he's shown... That he 100. has had those 90 plus average games some of them one of them even i think he had a 94 and he lost so he's, t he's showing me that there's there's so much good in there 140 times he's been able to get out but for me you know it would be great to see him come back 85. and see how he approaches it differently to, to, to what he's learned this week he definitely should be here. He really has done the ADC proud. And here we go. He's doing him proud again. One out of the main. And this is the sort of thing we just haven't quite seen enough of from him. Looking to sign off in style. 140. Gary O'Connor, 121. Callum Francis was hoping to still be in the race at this point, but that brilliant performance from Larry Butler put paid to his chances. 101. That'll do. Yeah, Gary, when he looks back on some of the games, I'm sure he'll watch some back. He'll he'll see that his setup play 62. coming Larry into those finishes is, has been a bit patchy. Getting shot on the first leg. Nothing patchy Gary about Hayes. that from Gary Hayes, who takes the first leg in this match. And let's just give Gary second leg Callum to throw first. Game on. When he when he gets back on the hockey, I'm gonna give him we're gonna give him a nice little souvenir. So friends of Gary Hayes, get your phones out 100. now. Get ready to take a picture of the screen. There you go. Look at that. 115.62 average. One out of forty. In fact, take it now, because it's 120. Modus Super Series, the 60. gift that just keeps giving. Hang on a minute. 120. Oh, he's maintained the 120 average. And you can see that one was a genuine bounce out. You can see where he absolutely hit that top wire plum. 85. Square on and caused himself... A proper bounce out, we'll call it. Magnetic missiles from Gary Hayes in this 60. match. Giving Francis miles behind. 
Here he comes out. One miles ahead. It's Francis's sixth 180 of this 60. group. Calvin Hill car 76. That's double top for Francis to he level it up. The second and what a tidy shot Francis. that was. You know what question I'm going to ask you next, Scott, because we've spoken about Gary Hayes already. If he's in danger of thinking that he played worse than he actually did, is Callum Francis weirdly in danger of thinking like he played better than he did? Game on. I, I don't think once you've got the points on the board, you can say that you've played better than you did because I think legs are defined and moments are defined by how you hit the doubles. And he's had so many four threes. If that's not with, with, with not 30. such a good average. So for me, that would be more character building than those 90 odd averages where you're blowing people away. He's going to finish third or fourth in the group. So in the end, that's probably about right, isn't it, for Callum Francis? 120. After again, we see a dart off dart bounce out there from little Gaz. <laughs> I think some of his highlights should be the faces that he's pulled when he's been round behind another player as Callum Francis knocks in 180 number seven. Well, with Gary Hayes on the bottom of the table and Callum Francis out of the race, this game was in danger. 140. It's been a bit of a, a damp squib, but it's been anything but so far. It really has 81. been gloves off. Gary and, car 141. Well, not even that. I don't think they're really taking a lot of notice of each other. I think they're just going up there and playing, which is, which is the whole idea of the job in the first place. 105. Super setup from Hayes, utilising the middle of the board to leave himself on a double after a dozen. 76, got your car 36. And that double is double 18, Each that's it. The third leg, Gary Hayes. This is simply sensational. 13 dart leg from Gary Hayes. Yeah, not much wrong in this match so first. far. Game on. There is the average after three legs. Gary Hayes on 109. 45. Neither player has missed a dart double in the game yet. And the scoring has been pretty handy too. 60. And average-wise, a send-off that both would be fairly happy with. If they can stay in and around this area. Yeah, one of them might have the game of the week and end up losing it. Eighty one. The other bit of encouragement I give to 100. ADC players thinking about going and playing on that tour because they might qualify for this is you know, it, it, apart from the qualification system through the ADC, it is an invitational, invitational tournament. So if somebody comes from the ADC and plays really well, there is every chance that they'll get an invite back to the event as well. 100. And this is what I said earlier. I, I would like to see Gary Hayes under the different circumstances. He, he didn't know whether he was going to come this week or not. Be, be, because of, of things 61. off the board, and we, we totally understand that. And and I'd just like to see him having that go again in one of the other groups and a, and a bit of a free run, you know? Well, if he signs 60. off with a three-figure average here and a, a good win, it gives the selectors something to think about. Most important impressions are the first and the last, aren't they? 99. Come on your car, 138. You might leave a lasting impression here at the Super Series. Fifty-eight. Got your car sixty. Game shot on the four flag. Gary Hayes. Yeah, tidy finish in there. Fifth leg, Gary to throw first. Game on. Still 
just a touch north of 100 average. 137. And it would be nice if Gary Hayes could finish this in 15 darts or better so that that 100 average remains. 134. Yeah, it would be a really nice way to sign off. Been a good guy in the players' room. Really has got on well with everybody. Blended in. 140. The best Sean Deutsch lookalike I have <laughs> ever seen. One hundred and forty. Oh, superb, superb stuff. He's halfway to doing it in twelve darts. Never mind fifteen. Ninety-five. Which leaves it a little awkward, but you can fancy having six darts from the one-two-nine. Eighty-one. Gary Carr, one hundred and twenty-nine. Francis is here, 92 plus, so he's playing his part in this game without doubt. Well, that has been the Achilles heel of Gary Hayes. Car 146. So he'll need to take out the 106 to get the three-figure average to end his week on a high. Everybody wants Gary 90. Hayes to do this. Gary As Scotty said, he's been a great guy in the back room. All the production gallery are cheering Gary on here. Treble 18. Double 16. Oh, and he's just missed Coming out. 56. Although he might get a chance again because Francis, if he takes this out, will extend the encounter. 16. Gary O'Connor, 32. Game yeah, Sean first start Gary for Gary Hayes. It's a 4-1 win he finishes off with. Both can be pleased with their work this week. And Gary Hayes will go home with that 99.33 average. Best of the week. Check out 66%. So Francis has learned a lot this week in his appearance. Gary Hayes has learned a lot this week. We are the Modus Super Series, and we're heading to a short break. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. So Gary Hayes has bookended his week quite well. He started off with a really high average on Monday against Colin Osborne in his first game, deep in the 90s. He's now averaged 99.33 here in a 4-1 success against Callum Francis. Let's see how that ends 
him up in the table. Yes, he's going to be bottom of it, but we've seen some really good performances from Gary Hayes this week and will most certainly be for the better for that experience. So him and Getty are on six points. Of course, Getty can get to eight. He plays in our final game of the session against Conan Whitehead. Next up for us, it's going to be the clash between Larry Butler and John Brown. This has ramifications in terms of races with different parts of the table. John Brown looking to finish top of the par, whilst for Larry Butler, a win here would put him into third place in the table come the end of play. So there's still plenty to play for here at the Super Series. So let's hand down to our commentary team to see how the battle of LB and JB will end up. Here's SM and CM. Thank you very much, HD. Larry Butler appreciating Henry's comments as well, it seems. Thumbs up to the balcony from the old eagle. 65-year-old signing off for the week. He's been, as always, a great participant. He's been a contender, in fact, for much of the week, but he just left himself too much to do. Now really did show us what he was about, didn't he, last game? Is Henry offering out the, the waves and the thumbs up from the balcony there? Just calm down, Henry. Be professional, man. Ah, right. I think it wasn't Henry. First I'll like take that back. I think first. one of the players went to say goodbye. Game on. Either Gary Hayes or Callum Francis, and they were just bidding farewell. Just to give us an insight, Scott, into the, the sort of camaraderie you get in practice rooms, because Six spending eight. a week with people it's difficult not to to get on isn't it even though when you get on the stage of course they do become your enemies yeah absolutely well they don't have to be an enemy they've just got to be an adversary really more than anything i don't think you have to make an enemy of, of, of a player i think you know there, there are things that that go on backwards and forwards in the heat of the moment after matches and and what have you it's, it, it tends to be if you 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 find you get an enemy it's 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 generally because something's been said after a game and and something you can't let go and it, it, it so six but, but the back rooms here have been absolutely magic you know um, I've been really impressed obviously when I was here before um, you know having been in rooms where it's very quiet nobody's talking 95. to one another here it's just a a bit of a family atmosphere here there's just the six of them or the five of them in the back room and. And everybody seems to be getting along. And, and, and I think what are they? when they go out on stage, it, it allows them to play a bit better. So it, it doesn't hinder anything. I, I, I like the way it works here. And the, and, and the player's room is so tight and confined. There isn't any room for aggro out there because you, you're sat on top of one another. Well, the eagle will fly 92. away after this match. He bows out. But John Brown will be back finals night tomorrow. And you could be here as well. 7.30 p.m. the start time. Tickets available for dartshop.tv. Absolutely free of charge. You may even get a selfie with Scott Mitchell. How about that? Indeed. And John you know, I, may have, I may have bought a jacket for Saturday night. Who knows? One hundred and twenty-eight. Mario Kart, one hundred and thirty-two. Bullseye for starters. Not going to happen now, so Brown will get the chance to break in leg one. 13 will leave tops here, I believe. 85. And 6 won't. John Nukar, 16. Double eight. Well, this is the dart that he was using well earlier today. That could not be much closer. But again, look, no sign of a frustration there at all from John Brown. Eight. He just gets 47. on with it. Didn't work out on that occasion, and Butler instead gets two darts at double 16. That becomes one at double eight. 31. He fails to find. Eight. Brown back in business. Game shot on the first leg. John Brown. I said earlier that John would like to leave with this last game. Under his belt, Something like John as a win. First. Game on. Oh, 
Larry doing 100. a few loosening exercises there on his right knee. That's about as pumped as I've seen John Brown behind Butler there. Just giving himself 100. a bit of a talking to. And I think maybe he's seen what Gary Hayes has just done, and they all want to finish the group with a flourish. Eighty. Of course, he is still playing for the possibility of being the top dog as well. If he wins this match, John Brown 60. by a couple of legs or more, you'll go back to the summit of the table. But we'll have to rely on Luke Getty beating Conan and Whitehead to stay there. 80. Your favourite call, Scott. You've heard that a few times this week. Yeah, to be honest, I'm getting fed up with it now. 28. John Ricard, 141. This group really have strained his voices. Um, lots of 180s here in Group C. One hundred and twenty-one, and I have to say, Paul Hinks, we've hardly noticed he's been here, have we? Isn't that a sign of a good referee? You don't notice them. Eighty, absolutely. John Yukar, twenty. Hasn't had any needle or anything to deal no with. Score. It has been well spirited between the players in action as well. Not like when uh, old Scotty Dog was on the stage at the Circus Tavern. Oh, yeah, I'm, I've got the reputation of a troublemaker, me, when I'm on stage what and a camera in my 71. face, haven't I? John Ducar, 20. That was great fun with Peter Manley. A great fun watch. Getting shot on the second leg, John Brown. And John Brown's had a lot of fun this week, and he'll have more at finals night tomorrow, I'm sure. I have to be honest, while it was all going on, I was starting to think I knew what, how Adrian Lewis felt the all those years ago. First. Were you Come ready on. to walk off? No, that would waste too much energy, mate. 81. I do love watching Peter Manley. Did come and play here for a week at the Super Series as well. Had some moments. I remember a quite 58. well spirited, almost like Bow ill tempered game against Andy Jenkins. Again, two players that know each 100. other inside out have probably played a mind game on each other over the last 25 years. Yeah, well, I think what happened was Andy Jenkins declared to Manley before they went on the stage that he was going to beat him 4 0. And Manley took out a ton plus finish in the first leg. And let's just say, let Jenkins know about it. Yeah, I know that feeling, you know, after four and a half hours in the practice room before I played him last weekend, it, uh, he let me know every 12, 20, every bullseye he hit, yeah, without actually talking to me. He's just masterful. 129. Larry Butler, of course, himself is completing a, a long week's work. Not only has he been here this week, he also played in the World Seniors. And it could have been different for Larry, couldn't it? Put himself in a great position against Darren Johnson to set 95. up a, a meeting with Phil Taylor in the second round, but squandered a two-set lead. 40. John Lucas, 79. Trouble 13, and he's got it to leave top. Well, it's a John bold Brown. bid, but when it comes off, it feels good, and it looks good. And John Brown leads 3-0. 12. And that was a break of throw. First. Game on. I think we can see a few signs here that the physically demanding nature of the Super Series might have just 54. caught up with Larry right at the very end of his week. It was just a grimace there, wasn't there? And a stretch of that knee, which is strapped up. All those years of standing on that right leg, Walking leaning seven. over towards the board. Maybe starting to take its toll. 
because this is rapid fire game after game. Well, look, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to try and claim that darts is athletic as a sport, but you do do an awful lot of walking, don't you? Some of my best days on my Six steps days. counter have been long days at the darts, but not of late. <laughs> it's, uh, those no, early exits don't help the step pattern. Oh, when you play here, you'll have plenty of steps to do, Scott, because it's five matches a day, whether you like it or not. 140. Right, Larry Butler looking to leave at least 170. 85. But needed 95 rather than 85 to do that. Yeah, the treble three. Those 10 points less that he would have needed to have done that. 135. So John Brown getting the win that he needs here. He'll go to plus 16 and 14 points 60. and will be back on John top. John 65. Fourteen. Four tops. Forty-five. Last Bloody chance Carl, for Larry. Forty. John Newcar twenty. So John Brown to close his group stages out with a four nil win. It's double ten incoming. And he hits Game it, third dart. John Brown. Game shot on the match indeed to John Brown. He leaves the group on 14 points. Will that be enough for him to head the group? An 84 average, not his best. But John Brown will be just pleased to be through. As for Larry Butler, we say goodbye. And what entertainment he's given us, the American Charger. The Bold Eagle departs, as we do, as we head to a break. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where John Brown has joined us up here on the balcony for the completion of his Group C campaign. First time here, yep. and now first time at finals night. I know, I just, I'm, I'm happy to be there. Obviously today's a bit of a tough day, yesterday was good, but just happy to be there Saturday night, can't wait. 
How would you reflect on the couple of days that you've had here? Um, yesterday, amazing, you know, everything clicked, everything felt good. But today, I think uh, Derek Mindset completed today. I tried to defend, mm -hmm. which is my own fault. I know I, sh I should be Derek Mindset completely, but uh, I fell very long, so I'm happy to do that. So tomorrow night, different game. Do you feel like you were looking at the league table possibly at times instead of the fixtures in front of you? Yes, definitely. I think I think uh, I was looking at my shoulder rather than looking ahead and trying to get many points as I can. I was always looking at my shoulder, which is wrong. I live and learn, mm -hmm. but uh, I learned from that. F happily for a long, it didn't punish, it didn't punish me. So uh, fingers crossed tomorrow, another day. Of course, moving into tomorrow night. Okay, we've got a pool phase of the first couple of matches, but it's a bit more knockout style. So do you think that possibly play a bit more to your strengths? Yes, definitely. I think. Um, yeah, tomorrow, the other day completely, I can attack it again. I, I, I feel like I'm throwing well. Mindset to make game completely, so uh, tomorrow you get the best of me, I think. You were here to watch your dad last week. Is dad going to be here tomorrow night to watch you? I believe he is. So uh, this week he'll be supporting me rather than me supporting him. So hopefully he gets me along. Hoping to go one better than the old man? Well, I hope so. <laughs> I said he is, but uh, yeah, I definitely will. Family Rivalry is very much alive. John, great to have you up here. Many, many thanks. Thank so you. one more game for us to go. It sees Conan Whitehead in action up against Luke Getty, Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy are in the commentary box for this one. Yeah, we talked about the family rivalry and I, I gave you an enlightenment there with me and my daughter playing county together and things. So, yeah, we knew that was coming for him and Steve and we look forward to seeing Steve here tomorrow night. For finals night, watch his little boy. Bet you're yep. one of those dads who wouldn't let your kid win a game of chess or anything, weren't you? Absolutely not. I wouldn't let my two kids play darts until they could mark. <laughs> well, John Brown has certainly made his mark here, and Steve will be cheering him on tomorrow, but also in action tomorrow night will be this man, Conan Whitehead, who is trying to get back to the top of the table. Has to win the match to do so. Luke Getty, though, is probably the most difficult the opponent to face today. And who would have thought we'd have been saying Game that on. at this stage yesterday? Oh, indeed, he, he's just absolutely turned it turned it right round. And um, yeah, he he looks to be the most difficult opponent to face today. Forty-one on, on form of today. Well, let just let me just say before I sign off for the week here with the Super Series. What a pleasure it has been to share Thank the commentary you, box with Scott Mitchell, former world champion. All round nice guy. 95. And pretty handy with the microphone as well. As you as you would explain to me at the start of the week, 43. it's just lovely to talk about a game you absolutely love. And uh, that's very different. It never, ever feels like a job coming in and talking about darts 66. ever. Yeah, and it's always great to get the insights of players who've been there, done it, worn the T-shirt, something I certainly can't offer. Never been there, never done it, and there aren't many T-shirts I can fit into these days. 85. We have a good bunch of former players that are here at the Moda Super Series. It is a really good setup. Very knowledgeable from different parts of the game and different parts of the country where maybe things would have seemed different. It's again all part of this brilliant setup here with the with the Super Series and and how it operates. And you'll get two tonight because Colin Hammond will be joining the coverage. Really, mate? Oh, she's already here. Forty-four. I look forward to that. Rini, one of my buddies. So once 95. again. 95. Corner of car 78. It's great on a barbecue, you know. She came and did a barbecue at my house once for us and cooked all the food. And she was amazing on a barbecue. I must have uh, must have missed the invitation to that one. Corner of car 93. It was before I met you, mate, to oh, be fair. Well, still no excuse. 74 remaining. 53. Connor will call 12. 
Game shot on the first leg. Corner Whitehead. So first leg goes to throw. Second leg, Luke to throw first. Game on. Just checking back the scores. Are a little bit confused as to what just happened with Conan Whitehead. 78. He scored 18. Left 60. Went treble 16. 57. Yeah, sorry about that. That was my fault, mate. I was talking about barbecues <laughs> around lunchtime while uh, stomachs are rumbling. Uh, barbecued my mind, 100. that decision from Conan Whitehead, but in the end, he got the leg. So Conan 40. looking to conquer again on a finals night. He will be back 7.30 p.m. for... The Saturday session, the money matches, £5,000 to the winner. And, of 100. course, that place at Champions Week, joining John Worsley, the winner of week one. Ninety-five. Conan was confident even after his poor day in Group A on day one. He did say, don't worry. I'll be there Saturday. Yeah, there are players that have got more experience in this event. Should go for the bull here, Luke Getty. Well, why bother with the bull when you can fill up that? Had he hit the single, ninety-five. Well, that's not going to be a finish. Yeah, Colin Osborne said something similar. He and Conan themselves had a conversation after Monday, and they were like, "Well, you're going to have to get out of here." Yeah, Conan themselves had a conversation after Monday, and they were like, "Well." It's a long week. Osborne actually nearly he managed to top group A, didn't he, after that slow start? Yeah, he did with some impressive performances. One hundred. Some impressive darts this week. Sixty-eight. Let's not forget, we still have second phase of Group B. Game shot on the second leg. Corner Whitehead. Whitehead halfway there then to, a, to a win Game that would on. see him finish top of this group. And again, not many thought that that could happen with John Brown winning all of 60. his matches yesterday. And just about the only way it could happen was to be one player to win all the matches today. That's what Conan Whitehead is on course to do. 59. Yes, a slight fact that we've kind of glanced over. While all the shenanigans of the table topping and sliding up and down have been going on. 100. Conan's just quietly got on with his job. And he's going to be in action on his birthday. What a present it would be to 60. get that £5,000 check and a sport champions week. And maybe, maybe Conan Whitehead could become Mr. Motor Super Series and win two out of the first three series. 60. Similar to what Robert Thornton's done at the seniors, winning three out of the four televised events. Yeah, thanks for that, mate. I thought I'd be allowed to mention it by Friday. Still sore? 123. Absolutely sore. Uh, I'm more determined than ever to uh, go back to the seniors and. 108! Colin Lucar, 158. He's gone 54, 54 ball here. He's 90. having fun Luke, at the end of 100. Friday. He's got that Friday feeling of the Super Series. Luke Getty's had that all day himself. 70. Conor Car 68. Fifty-two. Luke Car thirty-two. So Luke returns, a prospect of a 16 dart break of throw, with a prospect of a 17 dart break of throw, with a prospect of no score. Maybe Conor Car 16. Not quite hitting it. Couldn't get closer. Oh no! Luke Car 32. Oh, Getty gets back.
Getting shot on Getty the third gets leg. it. Luke gets and he it. has a deficit with a break of throw. That's not the first time today we've seen that shot from Conan White. We saw him bust 19 by scoring 19 as well, didn't we? Fourth leg, Luke to throw first. Game on. Forty-five. Conan looking very determined, and he definitely really wants to get out of this group on top. The advantages that come with it. Seventy-eight. Fifty-nine. Vigorously gesturing something to himself there, Conan Whitehead. It would be a little bit of an anticlimax for Conan, I'm sure, to win 41. four on the spin and then lose his last match of the day. 96. Let's get the Scott Mitchell take on what we've seen from Luke Getty then in the last couple of days, because it has been a real turnaround for him, hasn't it? One on his eighty. Well, I, I mean, I could only say it's it's chalk and cheese. You know, there there are other there are other players out there that know and people that know Luke better than me. But ninety eight. You know, we always had when he when he had that that average last night, uh, in in the la his last game ninety four uh, beating John Brown, it was pretty special to be honest. And and he's turned up and sort of started his first games with that. Maybe fatigue set in. Maybe maybe he's 55. trying too hard again. But but I've I've kind of quietly been impressed with him. Yeah, it's been a really good day's work for Luke. Seventy-two. Luke the car. And impressed in the way that he's bounced back, rather than the way that he's played to, to bounce back from the problems that he was having. And here we go. He's bouncing back again. He's done this once already today. One hundred and twenty. Connor Almost Carl perfectly 56. timed while you were making the point. Luke Getty, but Conan Whitehead looking to say, get out of here. Getting shot on the fourth leg. Conan Whitehead. And he could be in a leg's time because that's a break for our Series 1 winner. Fifth leg, Conan to throw first. Game on. He now needs one more leg to ensure top spot in Group C. 89. Scott Mitchell is going to make his way to join Henry. So you stuck with me for the last leg or potentially the last three legs of this match. 140. But it's all right. We'll have some fun. Ninety-six. Uh, Conan White, Teddy. Well, he needs to try and slam in a treble. I can see why he's done that. Actually, going for the ball with a second dart. One hundred and twenty, and then landing another one to leave himself on a finish. I'm not sure, but he actually got the maths right there. Fifty-eight. Conan Carl, one hundred and fifty-two. at the 25 wouldn't have left a finish but 100. maybe didn't mind maybe just fancied some fancy stuff if you like 100. well that really should have been a 180 140, it is a 152. 140 rather than 120 the point is touching the board but it's double 16 for conan whitehead who Game completes a conan clean whitehead. sweep at the Super Series to soar to the top of Group C. And tomorrow night, the birthday boy will be on the stage at finals night, bidding for another crown at the Super Series. The winner of Series 1 is in the mix. He wins 4-1 against a much improved Luke Getty today. But it's Whitehead that goes through alongside John Brown to join Leonard Gates at finals night. Three places up 
for grabs this evening and to review this afternoon's action and perhaps preview tonight's a little bit. It's back to Scott Mitchell, who's joined Henry Deacon. Chris, thank you very much for all your work this week. Scott Mitchell, Conan said he was going to be here Saturday night. He is here Saturday night. He's a man of his word, and he's a very determined man. When he says that he's going to do something, he does it. You back Conan into the corner, and he does come out swinging. He, he does not get backed into a corner lightly. He's the sort of player, when it's a day like today, when everything's on the line, he'll produce his best stuff because he knows there's no second chances. Well, absolutely. That's five on the bounce there, which kind of went under the radar a little bit for us in comms because obviously there was other things going on and to and and fro in the group. And uh, yeah, he, he'll leave here very confident with, with that uh, under his belt. Well, let's have a look and see how the table shapes up then after the conclusion of 10 games for every single player because it is Conan Whitehead who leads the way, who has won the group. Now, you did say this morning that that could be the value bet and you're absolutely right. Yeah, I don't like being right. Um, don't tell my wife. But yeah, th I, I did like being right there. You know, that was value. And uh, he, he's gone and done it. You know, he, he was capable all week of reeling those five on the, on the trot. John Brown, lovely to see that he's mature enough to know when he's kind of made a mistake. And he did play like he defended. We, m we mentioned it in commentary there. He was playing Callum Francis and, and it was a must win for Callum. And that should have been the easiest one mm -hmm. for John to, to go and get because he could have just sat back there in his armchair and, and watched Callum struggle. And in it, what, what John tried to do was try to win the game and was thinking about how he could top the group and make himself safe. And that was kind of the wrong line of thought on that one. But he's admitted it. He's come up here. He's told you. He's learned from it. And the Moda series is developing once again. I know we have a mini pool stage tomorrow night in mini groups of three tomorrow evening where they'll play two fixtures. But the fact it's a more knockout element, I asked him up here on the balcony whether that would actually be a help to us because it's more natural to him. Yeah, I mean, most of the tournaments that we play wherever we go, whether it's, it's pro tours, challenge tours, ADC sort of stuff, it, it's mostly knockout. So the, the boys will be back a bit more familiar with, with the surroundings and knowing that it's... It's all out there and don't leave it don't leave it in the practice room you've got to take it up there and and use it just a couple of thoughts and reflections on gary hayes and larry butler we've seen them since monday morning here at the super series larry with a strong end today two proceedings and gary hayes well he left us with a well a blockbuster both have added something to their groups this week and and, and it's been great to see larry here he, he's a character off the board anyway mm -hmm. um and he he's been he's been great to have around the place and and, you know, the likes of John Brown and Callum Francis, being around a guy like mm -hmm. a legend like Larry Butler, it's just a massive help towards their development. And, and, and Gary Hayes, we know that he had a bit of adversity coming into this week, and he was unsure whether he, could, he, he wanted to be here. I hope that he, he's taken something away from this week, because as the week went on, he did start to feel familiar. He did start to get better. And, I, and I'd like to see him back again and, 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 and having another go at it with the experience that, that he's gained this week. Well, let's have a quick check of the group detail because that's going to be the action we're going to see tonight here from 10 o'clock on Sporty Stuff TV, the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Now, at the halfway point in the evening, all the players were tied on two points. Owen Bates was the man who made the push in the end. He's on six with Rob Collins, Adam Hunt, Colin Osborne all on four. And you can't even rule out Prakash Jiwa from the finals night mix. Not at all, because it's all still there so tight. We saw, we saw Prakash have an absolute mare in that first game. And what he came back with in the second game was, was like a different guy. It was, it was like a doppelganger had come and, and, and borrowed his shirt. So he's never out of it. It really is tight. We're going to be, again, like today, looking at scenarios. That, that group is not going to be over till the last game or two well we look forward to that that's going to be our action from 10 o'clock this evening here on sporty stuff tv and the moda super series youtube channel scott and i will be back with corinne hammond for all the action from 10 p.m we're looking forward to a good night of the darts aren't we scott we are indeed so we're going to have a little bit of a rest over the next couple of hours hope that you can join us from 10 p.m for group b action but here in group c conan the barbarian put all the opposition under the sword bye-bye for now